For the first time in history, the great soccer state of Minnesota is hosting a men's World Cup qualifier. We are live at Allianz Field here in St. Paul, where the pressure couldn't be higher and the temperature could barely be lower. Sunday, the U.S., they fell in Canada in what was then the coldest game in the history of this program. 22 degrees at kickoff tonight. We're going to be right around zero, and the temperature is falling. And the massive news from the U.S. camp, their struggling star, Christian Pulisic, will start this frigid affair from the heated bench. Welcome to the North, where the road to Qatar is set to freeze over. After a week of high drama. Robinson! The US will be saying, here's to you, Mr. Robinson. 1v1 against the keeper! And there's the exclamation point for Canada! But this will leave a sour taste for Greg Berhalter's back. I cannot be stopped and this is my time to make it. The mantra is simple. Mind over matter. Now the U.S. once again back under pressure. A win and nothing less. Pepe wants it. Pepe gets it. Get that hot crane moving. Christian Pulisic. He's been on another level tonight. The deserts of Doha await. But tonight, a frozen fortress beckons its challenger. The United States. Honduras. Next on Fox Sports. The road to Qatar winds through the North Star State tonight as the U.S. inches closer and closer to their 11th FIFA World Cup berth. Beautiful crowd here in St. Paul, Minnesota here as we get set for the U.S. and Honduras. Rob Stone, State Puff, Marshmallow Man, Mo Adu, <laughs> Stu Holden, Alexi Lawless just finished writing his manifesto. Glad you're here with us. Listen, it, it's cold. We all know it's cold. So let's let's talk about it, how the conditions and the temperature are going to impact this one. The field behind us, it is heated underneath. Shouldn't be that much of a factor, unlike what they had to deal with in Canada on the artificial turf. But the temperature is certainly a different story. Greg Berhalter, the U.S. manager, saying he expects it to have an adverse relationship with Honduras. How, though, is it going to affect the U.S. team? Well, I mean, you would imagine it'll be much of the same. They they don't want to play in these cold conditions either. But with a fan base like this out in attendance, they have to just embrace it. We talked to some of the players, and they've taken the right the right mentality, the right approach to it. We talked to Tim Weah, and he said, look, when you warm up, you got to take that a little bit more serious. But as soon as that first ball is kicked, their focus shifts. They know that they got a bad result in Canada. They want to come out here and right that wrong. And Mo, by the way, told us he would wear all of this if he was Everything. still playing on the field. <laughs> he can't move. He'd just fall <laughs> over the floor. He'd never be able to get up like a turtle. Yeah, but look, this U.S. team is struggling in the first half throughout the octagonal. And I, I think, look, if you're cold, how do you warm up? You run, run. around. And look, this team needs a good start coming off of that Canada result. Get after this Honduran team. If you want to make an advantage, all the talk about the temperature, you have to do it on the field. And I think this U.S. team is ripe. We're going to talk about the lineup in a little bit. You have pace. You have verticality. Get after them from the first minute. Yeah, it's cold. You know what? Suck it up, Buttercup. All right? When I look at this team right now, I think about the great Debbie Allen. All right? What does she say? You want fame? Fame costs. And right here is where you start paying for it. If you have a problem as a player with what's going on here in terms of the weather, go talk to your head coach because Greg Berhalter wanted this game here. And guess what? This is the most important game in Greg Berhalter's managerial career. You're going to let the weather get in the way of an opportunity to go to the World Cup? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You embrace it because guess what? As painful as it may be for the U.S. players, look on the other side. It's 10 times more painful for the Honduran players. It's called home field advantage. You guys ready for this one? Anybody here cold? No. Yeah, let's get this party going here. This will be the U.S.'s third game in a seven-day span. This run, it started in Columbus last week. A 52nd-minute goal from Anthony Robinson. 1-0 over El Salvador. Sunday in Canada, a seventh-minute Kyle Laren goal really set the tone. Plenty of U.S. possession, very little spark, though, in an eventual 2-0 loss. Greg Berhalter told us yesterday, the goal every window, stay in the top two in this qualified group. That is exactly where they have been since match day four. Canada currently on top. Honduras in last. They're already eliminated. The U.S. above Mexico due to a better goal difference. Talk to the starting 11. Greg Berhalter told us three TBDs when discussing the lineup. The first two at right back. 
desk sits Reggie Cannon starts. Yeah, Cannon comes in there, but look, let, let's not talk about those other ones without getting to the most important one right now. Christian Pulisic, your star player, starting on the bench for Greg Berhalter. This is a big call. Look, I know Pulisic has not been in good form, but you're starting and putting your best player on the bench. Morris comes in, has not started to qualify for the U.S. going back to 2017. His last competitive start was 2019. That is a huge nod from Greg Berhalter. Can Morris we pay him? And Weah comes back in on that right side alongside Pepe. Time now for Match Day All Access, sponsored by Volkswagen. The presenting partner of U.S. Soccer, Greg Berhalter, with our Rodolfo Landeros. Coach, with uh, Christian Pulisic not being in the starting 11, what uh, what made you take this decision? Well, we think he still has a big role to play. It's just not in the first half of this game. We know he can come in and make an impact. He's done that a number of times before, and we expect him to do that again today. And you got a sense of the weather out there from training yesterday, right now. Uh, how do you plan on taking that onto your advantage? You know, it's just about being resilient. We've talked to the guys about that. We know it's it's difficult for both teams, but that's part of it. The World Cups on the line and you know we're going to go through it and we're going to give everything thank you very much coach thank you honduras ranked 76th in the world here's how they start mo well this is a honduran team who have already been mathematically eliminated from the world cup from a chance to go to the world cup but they still have some threats up top albert that leads and romel Coyoto. we know them from mls we know how dangerous they can be in transition similar in some ways to what canada possess in in Kyle Lahren and Jonathan David. But defensively, you can imagine they're going to try to keep it pretty compact and let the play in transition. Minor Figueroa, if I'm Ricardo Pepe, I'm causing problems for him all day long. They've allowed 19 goals, have a minus 14 goal difference. That is the worst of all the teams in the octagonal. The big talking point, though, for the U.S., the massive decision, maybe one of the biggest decisions, Lexi, of Greg Berhalter's tenure, electing to sit Christian Pulisic. Right move, wrong move. Uh, I think it's the right move. Uh, it's a it's a big call. It's an interesting call, but this is the national team. This is not therapy. This is not rehab. This is not charity. This is the best of the best being called in to do a job, and that job is to get to the World Cup. And Christian Pulisic has not been the player that this team. Keep in mind, Christian Pulisic is not being asked to carry the U.S. men's national team. He's not being asked to carry soccer in the United States. He's simply being asked to consistently be a factor in games, and he hasn't been able to do that. So whatever is ailing Christian Pulisic in body and mind, figure it out, do it on your own time, because he can be not only a great player, but he has the potential to be the greatest player the U.S. has ever seen on the men's side. So it's also an interesting moment here because you have him as a substitute, as Greg Berhalter said. And that is a, that's a hell of a player to have coming off the bench. So I do think he has a role to play here, but he's not being the Christian Pulisic that we need him to be for the U.S. Well, and part of that, though, the conversation, Alexi, has to be around the way in which he is being used. So if you're going to plug Jordan Morris into the starting lineup in the same position Pulisic has been playing inside, you're not playing to Morris's strengths either. So one of the things I'm really going to be looking for early in this game, Mo, is where's Jordan Morris? Is he playing out wide? Is he putting crosses in the box for Ricardo Pepe? Can you get service to these guys? Because the U.S. in the final third have not looked dangerous in the last couple of games scoring goals is a big part of this game to win and for the U.S., they need to be more dangerous in the final third. Get guys in dangerous spots. Well, you talked about scoring goals. Well, the number nine position we've seen has been a revolving door. Three different strikers have occupied that position during this window. Ricardo Pepe, I think most of us thought he would start the first game, maybe the second game. Well, he gets a chance in this third game. He scored three goals, three assists. A little bit of a slump right now, but I think this could be a great game for him to get back his confidence, get some chances. I talked about going against Minor Figueroa. This is an old player. An 20 years older than him. <laughs> <laughs> That's not much, is it, right? But I think this could be a great game for him to Back, to bounce back and then I'm looking at Luca Dilatore in the midfield no Yunus Musa no Christian roll down he gets a chance to show himself he's been doing well in the Eredivisie this is a big game for him a high stakes game World Cup qualifier but I'm excited to see him get some minutes in there and remember also no Tyler Adams yeah. available a young man who was wearing the captain's armband scoring has been an issue for the U.S. particularly in the first half just two of their 13 goals in World Cup qualifying have come in the opening 45 minutes of action. All the other teams in this region in action right now and qualifying already underway to make a Costa Rica. They are scoreless a little bit later tonight. El Salvador will play. They have league leading Canada and Mexico, Panama. That one massive at 10 p.m. Eastern. Our coverage is presented by the Volkswagen ID4. The guys wearing the ski goggles that you wanted, Mo. We talked to Adam. Coming up next, 
Is Mo still aboard the Pepe train as we get closer and closer to kick here in beautiful St. Paul? First time Matt Turner had allowed two goals in his 15 U.S. appearances. The New England Revolution keeper who appears to be on his way to Arsenal this summer. Again between the sticks with Zach Steffen unavailable due to a back issue. Trying to limit the impact of travel. That's one of the main reasons we're here in St. Paul. Three games in seven days for this World Cup qualifying stretch. Started in Columbus, Ohio. Quick flight to Hamilton, Ontario. Then to here. Right now in the Honduran capital, the high today was in the mid 80s. Currently, I'm looking at the Fox weather app. Three, it is three degrees here in St. Paul. Uh, beautiful crowd here, warming things right up in the North Star State. Rob Mosu and Alexi back here with you. Let's talk about some of these significant personalities ahead of this game. Ricardo Pepe, so much hype, so much promise. Had that big money move to Germany in early January. But he's found himself here in a bit of a slump mode. He has. And you know what? The Pepe train's been stuck at the station. It's time for him to release himself again. I think this could be a great opportunity. He's, he made his debut for the national team in World Cup qualifying against Honduras, came off the bench, and had a great second half, a goal, two assists. This could be a good chance for him to revive himself, get some confidence, get some opportunities. I want to see him be dangerous, show some movement off the ball, movement in the box, and then be the poacher that we know he can be, Still, Because this is a guy, again, there's so many question marks around the number nine position. He can solidify himself through this process. Yeah, and look, we're going to continue to talk about Pulisic because he's a player that when you look at this U.S. team starting this game you say what where is Christian Pulisic that that stat right there tells you a lot over the last couple of games dispossessed a team high 11 times did not win a single one-on-one -on -one of his five attempts in those games and I'm going to show you a couple of clips here that show it just a guy that's taking too many touches second guessing himself picks up the ball in a good spot here first touch not good facing up five defenders can you find somebody can you combine drives across dispossessed now look at this one, look at the spaces, it's wide. He's coming inside. Part of that is by design, by Greg Berhalter. So I don't think he's using him in the right way, but again, turns into pressure, dispossessed. Now this is a great one for Pulisic. Ball is wide, attack your defender 1v1. Where's the space? Down to the line, get on the left foot. No, where does it come? Back into pressure, four Canadian defenders, cleared away and gone. Now that's just a couple examples. But for tonight, for the U.S., vertical is one word that we heard a lot from Greg Berhalter. This man can do it. He can, can it be effective? He can. Uh, look, you know, leave it to Greg Berhalter to blow the minds of the American soccer community. It's not only that he is sitting Christian Pulisic. He has then said, all right, I am going to put this man right here, Jordan Morrison, an MLS player, an MLS player who is out of season, and an MLS player who spent most of the last year injured with his second, uh, uh, second knee injury, his ACL. But as you said, when he is wide, he has the ability to take players on one on one. That's what he's going to be asked to do today. We'll see if he has better luck uh, and is more impactful than Christian Pulisic. Big, big shoes to fill. Yeah, and since coming back from that injury, 295 minutes of playing time for club and country. Zero goals, zero assists for Jordan Morris. As you take an updated look at the weather, wind chill sitting at minus eight. Coming up, we update the road to Qatar. Less and less spots available. Welcome back to St. Paul, Minnesota. Party people in this part of the world, right? The great North. Beautiful fans from American Outlaws. Rob, Mo, Stu, Alexi, back here with you. World Cup draw coming your way April 1st, and more and more teams headed their way to Qatar coming in November. Just yesterday, South Korea added their name to the list. And how about the heavy hitters already booked? Germany, France, Brazil, Belgium. England, Spain, Argentina already confirmed and the countdown to the November 21st kickoff is on 292 days away until the FIFA World Cup kicks off live here on Fox Sports. Walkouts anthems next as we get closer to kick between the U.S. and Honduras in this critical World Cup qualifier live from Minnesota. This match on FS1 is sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. We are back live at Allianz Field here in St. Paul, Minnesota, home of the mighty loons of 
Major League Soccer and Minnesota United. U.S. Soccer presented by Volkswagen. And it's Honduras and the United States World Cup qualifier. Only three matches left for both nations after tonight. The U.S. sitting in second place. Honduras already eliminated. The U.S. cannot lock up a berth to their 11th World Cup tonight. But boy, they can get awfully, awfully close to make an officiating crew huddled up in the tunnel before both teams make the walk out again. Lexi, the big news, no Christian Pulisic. How do you think that impacts the mental approach of both sides? Well, I mean, from the opposition, it's one less player that you have to worry about. But, you know, given what we talked about and have talked about and continue to talk about with what Christian Pulisic is at this moment, it, it it's not that big. Uh, it's not that big of a thing for them to be uh, to be thinking about. And it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity on the other side. And you know, we heard Greg Berhalter say there will be opportunities for Christian Pulisic today and going forward. But I think that this was the right move uh, uh, for Greg Berhalter to do to give this team the best possible chance of getting that three points again. This is the most important game in Greg Berhalter's managerial career. Berhalter telling us last night the idea, get vertical, stretch Honduras, be direct mode, and get that early goal. Who are you looking to to get that early goal? Well, obviously Jordan Morris could be stepping in for Christian Pulisic, but a man who I think has been really good for this team over the last couple of cycles, that man right there, Tim Weah. He missed the last game. He's such an important player for this team, and I think get him on the ball early, threaten him that back line, and let him go 1v1 in dangerous areas. And there's your captain, Walker Zimmerman, tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome King Cal to perform the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say does that star-spangled 
gentlemen, Keith Cal. Fans, please visit KeithCal.com. A beautiful, brisk night for World Cup qualifying from Minnesota. Windshield in the negatives, but we're about to heat things up with the U.S. and Honduras next. Welcome to the north, where the road to Qatar is set to freeze over. Christian Pulisic! He's been on another level tonight. The United States. Finds the space. What a goal that is! Honduras starts now. As the road to Qatar runs through the frozen tundra of Allianz Field, what a scene that's been set here in St. Paul, Minnesota for this World Cup qualifying match between the United States and Honduras. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Shivering beside Stu Holden. Soon to be joined on the field by Rodolfo Landeros. I'm John Strong. Okay, you get it. It's cold out here, but the U.S. has to win this game to keep World Cup qualifying on track. How do they take care of business, and what role do these conditions play? Look, I think once this game starts, the conditions aren't going to play that much of a factor. You're going to see the United States, and they need to. Get a fast start in this game. Be dynamic. Get him behind. Get this man some service. Pepe, he scored against Honduras the last time out. Hasn't had many chances. He needs one for his confidence. And then Jordan Morris and Weah, get him behind the defense. Cut balls back. Runners in the box. U.S., get a first-half goal. Just three matches to go when tonight is done, potentially separating the men of the United States from a return to the FIFA World Cup. Needing to win this one, we are underway. FIFA World Cup qualifying. It is the United States in blue and red. It is Honduras wearing white. All was well for the Americans Thursday night in Columbus. They did enough to beat El Salvador. They got the results they needed elsewhere, and they had a big cushion. There was a scenario where they could clinch a World Cup spot tonight. And then Sunday afternoon, losing against Canada in a qualifying match for the first time since 1980. Results elsewhere went against the U.S. And now here they are, back to square one. Very little margin for error, which is one more home game to come and trips to Mexico City and Costa Rica in March is an early foul. Albert Elise going down, the former Houston Dynamo player. Honduras, meanwhile, they're out. They're eliminated. They've lost six straight qualifiers. Their coach was essentially saying, why are we even here at this point in the cold conditions? And so given all of that context, Stu, what do you expect this game to look like? Look, I, Honduras are not just going to lay down and, and take a loss here against the United States. There is pride at stake, and you are going to see a team. Look, a lot of these players are very familiar with a lot of the U.S. men's national team players as well as... Looks like uh, they're talking to Matt Turner here, a referee. Well, this is interesting. So there was a long conversation yesterday with the match commissioner to clear all these different things that the guys are wearing in the full ball of clavas. And you see that pouch on the back of Matt Turner. That's from the Minnesota Vikings. That's something you see quarterbacks wear. Rodolfo Landeros down on the field. This is an interesting way to start because this had been talked about for days yeah. coming into this game. Yesterday, uh, they got a great assist from the equipment manager from the Vikings. The practice facility is just across the street from the team's hotel. They got the insole warmers, the quarterback pouch with Turner just took off. They also come with a heated bench with an overhead heat. They got hot air pumped it at feet level, which was provided to the away team, and as well heated seat warmers and hot beverages with apple cider and black tea. This was part of the strategy to mitigate the weather here in St. Paul. Passes behind Anthony Robinson from Weston McKinney. It's a drama and intrigue already. It is slightly comical, though, isn't it? I mean, you go through all of that, and then surely that would have been cleared for the fact that the referee knew he was going to do that, whistled straight away, and thanks but no thanks, Minnesota Vikings. Well, O'Shea Nation, our young referee from Jamaica, that's an interesting stand to take. Here's Reggie Cannon starting a World Cup qualifier for the first time. As the U.S. tries to get back into a rhythm now, get back to a good start. Well, and Acosta going long, Jordan Morris trying to slip it behind there of Kaye, the right back who just made his debut for Honduras in this window. Robinson's there to break up the counter. That's a good job dealing with that there, but it's something to watch for. When Honduras were looking to break, it was two against two with Elisa Kyoto up front, and it's going to be a lot of 1v1 defending in moments from Robinson and Zimmerman. It's, that foul is going to go against Jordan Morris down in the corner. It is 
great to see Jordan Moore starting a World Cup qualifier for the U.S. for the first time since a game in Honduras in September. 2017, that is. A second torn ACL. Just made his return at the end of the season with Seattle. Kelly Acosta said it was yesterday, though. Doesn't look like a guy that is coming off two ACLs. But this is a wonderful moment and a wonderful opportunity for Jordan Morris. And by the way, he's starting ahead of Christian Pulis. Well, that, that's the conversation there. It, it is a big call from Greg Berhalter. I, we've talked a lot, and we did in the pregame about Christian Pulisic and his current form. But this is still, this is Golden Boy. This is Captain America, Christian Pulisic. And Jordan Morris is starting over him in this game. And, that is a huge statement of confidence from Greg Berhalter. It's also one in which we're going to find out if it's the right call. We will see Pulisic in this game at some point. But can Morris early in this game have an impact? And you saw just a minute or two ago, he's playing a little bit wider on the left. They're trying to play direct and get him behind down this left channel. Maybe his first touch. Much to McKinney now. Alan Acosta getting the start ahead of Tyler Adams. That with a hamstring injury. Is dumped in the turf by Elise. Play of familiarity there. Kellen Acosta, longtime MLS player, at least like Kyoto playing MLS. Elise, who's now playing in France, having left the Houston Dynamo a year and a half ago. Zimmerman, the captain tonight for Reggie Cannon. Here's Tim Way. It didn't play in Canada on Sunday. Back on the field tonight. Acosta. Where's the width for the U.S.? It, this is look at all the numbers centrally right now. This has been one of their biggest issues. It's the understanding between Anthony Robinson at left back and whoever's in that left midfield position. The U.S. have to maintain width, or Honduras are just going to play so narrow. Look at their shape, they're defending in a 4-4-2, forcing the U.S. to go wide. If it's slow, they shift, they rotate, they stop it. It's back the other way. So one of the things I want to see early in this game, John, is the United States taking risks, playing passes in behind. If it doesn't on, second balls are there as well. Luca Della Torre getting his first ever start for the United States. He's tripped up. So a tight whistle early from O'Shea Nation as Juan Delgado is the, or Mejia rather, the guilty party. Well, that challenge is going to result in a set piece and we were out of practice yesterday, saw Kellen Acosta practicing putting these balls in. He has had some great set piece delivery over the years, an area which recently the U.S. have struggled. Zero goals scored in the 10 World Cup qualifiers for the United States. Similar type of range that Acosta delivered the winning goal in the Gold Cup final to the head of Miles Robinson in August in Las Vegas. And O'Shea Nation again being very aggressive right now, managing this game early. Well, because you know that Walker Zimmerman is the most dangerous target for the U.S. on this, and I'm just watching a little bit. He's, he's almost marking him like basketball style, trying not to let him get that half yard to get him behind here. And Kellen Acosta is now saying the wall's not even 10 yards away, which it doesn't look like for Maya. Okay, there we go, back it up. Acosta drives it in, McKinnon got it! I mean, this is exactly what the U.S. needed. A goal early in the game and a goal off a set piece. And it is Weston McKinney who gets on the end of the ball. Kellen Acosta, the number one job from a set piece, give your players, attacking players, an opportunity. And boy, does he. Beats the first man. McKinney rises up, and that is picture perfect. He's been doing it all season long for Juventus. And he does it here for the U.S. when they need. He has been the best player for this team over the past couple of months. And he has showed up 
when they needed him here in this match at home. 1-0 U.S. There were two issues for the U.S. coming into this must-win game. Issue number one, they aren't scoring first-half goals. Issue number two, they aren't scoring set-piece goals. And really, of all the players on the field, that's a young man, Weston McKinney, the beating heart and soul in so many ways, the biggest personality in so many ways for him to get on the end of it. Rodolfo, what are you hearing downstairs right now? After celebrating McKenney's goal, the order from Burke Halter was go and press high. We need the high pressure to take the ball away from Honduras. Ray Burhalter told us yesterday, this is one of those games where things could unravel once we get that first goal. He said, now the longer it takes, they're going to fight for their lives. It's going to be tough. But there was a feeling that if they could get that early goal, they could really go on from there. Let's see if the U.S. could do that as Morris wins the ball back off Kevin Lopez. You know, the other thing in early goal is just the, the tension that we felt in this building and from the players at practice yesterday. It just allows you to just exhale a little bit now and you have the confidence and can the u.s now take advantage of that and find a second one here great ball for morris and you can on the end of it way up denatore luca denatore crossing in back into the middle for weston mckinney looking for space blocked by pepe job not done for honduras defensively mono figueroa had the first header on that one Again, it's way up from the byline, cutting it back, not going to find Pepe. Figueroa is there, and he'll get it clear. Now Kyoto of Montreal and MLS laying it back. Ninth career goal for Weston McKinney, and here's what it means. Yes, it would be great to top Canada. Yes, it'd be great to finish above Mexico. It really is about Panama to a certain extent, Costa Rica. It's about finishing in those top three, and that's the scenario. The possibility for the U.S. when they play Panama in March, the second to last game of the qualifying process, that a head-to-head -head win would clinch the spot before the trip to Costa Rica. Panama play later tonight in Mexico City, so the U.S. could use some help from Mexico. Costa Rica are scoreless with Jamaica right now. Canada and El Salvador to come later on tonight. It's, it will be a foul. It does end up being a foul, but too many touches there from Tim Weah. And the right-hand side early in this game has been a strong point for the U.S. because the relationship between Weah, De La Torre, Cannon, interchanging, quick, one-touch passing has been good. It's unbalanced that Honduran defense on that side. That's where you get caught, though, in transition moments, giving the ball away, facing your own goal, and allowing Honduras to play quickly. It's the goal scorer, McKinney. Cannon again wants it up high. Denatori gets it inside. It's behind Cannon, but he's able to control. Kellen Acosta picked up the assist. by the Americans, Luca De La Torre, and inside though. Minor Figaro at the age of 38, able to make the play. Walker Zimmerman on the other side to stuff the counter. Here's Tim Weah. It's Rodriguez who knocked it away, Cannon picks it up. De La Torre, dancing with Diego Rodriguez. Gets it back from Reggie Cannon. Whips it in. Pepe brought it down. Couldn't find the space to get a shot away. At least now looking to escape. Kellen Acosta running with him. Anthony Robinson helping. Weston McKinney helping. That is going to be a foul, though. That's unlucky. It's good defending, though, from the United States, and especially from Anthony Robinson. He comes from the blind side and tries to nick the ball away. Get a look if he does catch more of at least. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a pull on the back, but. Even just a minute before that, I talked about the 1v1 defending. Walker Zimmerman on the far side, Miles Robinson, two guys that are good in that area. And the few times that I think they're going to be called upon have to get those challenges right and make sure they get tight but not get spun and allow Honduras in behind. On 
Toronto clipping it long there. Elise trying to lay it out for McKee, and he has. Elise sneaking in now. Lost his angle. Robinson defending. Anthony, to be clear. Second chance. A little bit of a slip from Elise there. We've not seen many slips on this surface early. That one is fortuitous for the Americans. And Pepe takes a hard collision there from Maldonado. No foul. Shooting. Figueroa saw Turner out off his line. And Ricardo Pepe slowly getting to his feet. It's a strong challenge. I think it's the right call to play on there. Certainly Pepe does take the contact, but didn't get a touch on the ball first. Defender was in a good position. All right, Rodolfo, what are you hearing down there? Well, based on the surface, they we have a couple of uneven surfaces. Most of the players I've talked to, they, they seem to, their, their perspective is they're, they're playing on turf. It, it, the ground will be frozen and the, the ball will the speed will be in a, in a more quick fashion, but they have to be careful with stepping in uh, to, to avoid injuries. That's what I was told. So, chance to come the other way now for Honduras. No foul there that the U.S. wanted. Canna was taken off the ball. We're tracking back by Luca De Torre. Kyoto holds it in on the outside. That's a big credit to the groundskeeping staff here at Minnesota United. They've never done this before, needed the field to wake up in the parlance at this time of year, still a month before the MLS season begins. An offside flag is up on Kevin Lopez. And to try to get this field ready on a frigid night. It is noticeably bumpier, though, isn't it? The ball, when it's kind of skipping between players than yesterday at practice, when it had that really slick and wet feel to it. The ball was zipping around. and. It's a lot colder today than yesterday, and you can really see that in the way that it's bouncing around as Pepe coming over to get a little bit of treatment here. So he took a hard knock. Now, this is a big night for Ricardo Pepe. It was a big night for him in Honduras in September. That was his debut. Goal and two assists in the second half as the U.S. came from behind to win 4-1. Is still getting looked at right now, so the U.S. are playing with 10 for the moment. McKenney knocked away. This is a dangerous situation here, potentially. In those types of midfield turnovers, at least once again, trying to control. McKenney knocks it out as Lopez was making the run. Pepe still off to the side. Now we're going to one more look at this, and Pepe is back on the field now. And oh, there it is that, that left flailing arm. Maldonado catching Pepe right in the face and I said to you yesterday I said oh one of the things if I was playing in this game today that I would not want would be some type of contact in the face on a Colt whether ball or elbow or whatever it was because that is a stinger. He's again trying to hold that ball up Jordan Morris on his back boy Anthony Robinson took that right in the chest that's going to sting he's doubled over a little bit it's a Honduras corner. All of the shots on goal that Honduras created, the two games of this window, have been headers. They've created some wonderful opportunities to score. Matt Turner getting himself set right now. Kevin Lopez to take. His outswinging ball. Redirected to the far side. Cannon was there behind a way up. Trying to lift it back forward. Miles Robinson heads it away. Well, Torrey miscontrolled it though. Figueroa resets for Elise. Figueroa lost the handle. Good work by Luca De La Torre. No, the whistle does go for a foul. That's been a good response from Honduras after conceding that goal in a good couple of minutes from the U.S. again, where they were on top and they found a way just to slow the game down a little bit. And here's Figueroa winning a foul on De La Torre. I'm not so sure about that one, I gotta say. I, I think he just loses his footing. He's trying to come back. The ball got away from him. It's been a bright start for De La Torre as well. A real possession type of player, tempo setter. Concedes a free kick and from a similar type of location from which the U.S. scored on the other end. It's the eighth foul whistled in 18 minutes by O'Shea Nation, a referee. It's Kevin Lopez once again.
going to see it. Didn't get a pass west of McKinney. Well, he needs an extra moment after having that knock off his forehead. Lopez once more trying to reset, slides it through. Mejia looking to reverse it around there for Figueroa. Now a chance for the U.S. to break. Here's Luca De La Torre on the run. Pepe's in front of him. Way is in front of him. Morris on the far side. It's in for Way. It's great work by Wisdom Paye. Just his third international appearance. Uh, I think De La Torre there has a chance, John, to just keep driving the ball forward, forcing Honduras backwards, and ends up playing that pass, releasing it too soon to where Tim Way hadn't really opened up an angle or a lane to receive the ball, and it allowed Honduras to clear it away. Cannon. Space and time to deliver this cross. Got in between options there. Lopez cleaning it up in front of Anthony Robinson, who wins it back. Bring the ball back inside for Way. A chance to shoot Way on! What a save that was, Luis Lopez. Well, from up here, it looked like he got a touch. Oh, he to did. He absolutely got a touch on it. And this is, this is you, you and I had a perfect view at this one. This is finding that far post in the back of the net. Great work initially. Anthony Robinson, the high pressure, stepping up, putting Honduras over. They win it back. Way ahead options in the middle. He wasn't even thinking about that. His head is down. He's picking out that far corner. And you're going to see the touch from Lopez across his goal. Yeah, there it is. Phenomenal save from Luis Lopez, which resulted in a goal kick. So, poor guy didn't even get that credit for it. <laughs> Lopez, who's been the number one for Honduras since the 2017 Gold Cup. In fact, it was the first qualifier he did play as they rotated their team heavily over the weekend and that lost to El Salvador. Morris able to keep it under pressure. Lopez went down to the keep there. Underneath Anthony Robinson. Antonio Gomez, head coach of Honduras. One of the few coaches in the world. He's taken three different teams to a World Cup, including Panama, their first ever World Cup four years ago. Was brought in October when they were at that point really, even then, dead and buried. It was a no-win scenario. And, after the last Sunday, he talked about everyone running out of patience, the job not being fun. He had to backtrack Monday, saying, I don't abandon ships like that. Channel is in her vicinity the other day, saying it was inconceivable that they would play a game in these conditions. He described it at one point as a game not to be enjoyed, but to be endured. And that's the situation Honduras find themselves in. Two recent World Cups they've been to, they lost in a playoff to Australia four years ago. Already eliminated tonight. The cost of the switch to Cannon. It's Weston McKinney in the eighth minute, heading in a Kellen Acosta free kick. Before a lot of fans were even in the building, long lines of fans trying to get in here tonight. Still, they're filing in. Cannon once again. That was sent away by Figueroa. watching Ricardo Pepe when the ball goes wide. He is starving for an opportunity. I mean, he's active in the box. His movement is good. He's checking away, trying to lose a defender. And so far, the service has not been there to give him a chance. That ball from Cannon doesn't beat the first man. It's cleared away. He had one or two touches in and around the box. But I, I like what I'm seeing from his energy right now and buzzing, checking too, trying to get involved in the game and keep himself active for that one chance when it comes. Can he bury it? Poor guy had this great, I don't know what do you even call it. It's pouch. basically pouch, yeah. <laughs> Referee made him take it off. 30 seconds into the game, he's been trying to stick his hands basically into his shorts to stay warm. He's been running around, doing sprints behind the play. Oh, 
to Ricardo Pepe. Able to keep it on Figueroa. Costa quickly up over the top. Tim Way, can he bring this down? And can he get around the outside? And Alvier, a little bit of contact there at the end. He is going to be given by O'Shea Nation. No corner for the U.S., but a foul instead. I was going to go back to that set piece. It's so important for the United States to be dangerous on set piece, and so much of that comes down to service. Kellen Acosta, two hands up, puts it into such a great spot. Weston McKenney starts at that near post, just finds a little angle off the weak side of his defender, and then in that moment to execute, the timing of the jump is so good. And it, you talk about guys that continually get on the end of set pieces. Weston McKenney is one of those for a midfielder. Finds such a great, he has such a great ability of his timing of his run, the places that he does, it's almost like a magnet between him and Zimmerman. Such a threat and a really important goal for the U.S. early in this game. Now can they defend? Miles Robinson got a little bit of a toe to that one. Diego Rodriguez coming forward. McKinney steps in to break it up. And now Weston McKinney on the run. Rolled in for De Torre. Jordan Morris wants it on the near side. Has to wait for it. Anthony Robinson's further upfield. Robinson now early cross blocked. A reset it for Kellen Acosta. Robinson once again in for Morris. Interchange intercepted by Elise in front of Kellen Acosta. Chase it down in the corner. I tell you, John, Kellen Acosta is having a great game for the U.S. And we've seen him be one of the most consistent players under Greg Berhalter. This has been Tyler Adams' position. Tyler Adams misses out. Kellen Acosta comes in. Just watch his distribution throughout this game. He's so important in switching the point of play. Just the pace on the ball, opening up defenses. A great ball here. They pick it up for Wea, who's in, knocked away. The follow-up was blocked there. Pepe got into it. Looks like Maldonado saved to goal. Zimmerman steps up to intercept. Can the U.S. get the second? Really trying to land the killer blow in the first half. Wea dumped off it. O'Shea Nation referee thought about blowing for a foul. Saying to both players involved, I saw it, but I'm going to let the U.S. keep playing. And to your point, for a Tyler Adams who's made himself indispensable over the years, yeah. to be out with a hamstring injury and have a guy like Kellen Acosta experienced, effective. Again, I, I mean, as I was talking about him, he almost pulled off a phenomenal assist, switching the point of play. You're going to see him shuffle over, just finding gaps, finding angles, combining, getting the U.S. from defense to attack. Really bright start, and, and he's at the heart of really every U.S. attack. Robinson able to weave his way through. Wea cuts it back. Wea drives on. Pepe it skipped underneath his foot. Now can Honduras look to break? Lifting it long, Miles Robinson up for it. Now Delatore, Jordan Morris in a dead sprint in front of him. Pepe wants it to his feet. Delatore as it poked away. And here comes the ball from Kellen Acosta. And this is something I can't remember seeing from the U.S. over the last two games. Our runners in behind. What a great run from Wea. Starting out wide right, finds a gap between the right center back and the center back. This is going to pay off for the U.S. over the course of this game because now Honduras, if there's no pressure on the ball, they've got to drop off. You're going to see space in front. That first touch from Wea was a good one, trying to set him up for the second. Lopez did good to come out and close down the angle there, not allowing Wea, who then tried a little bit of a back heel. But missed opportunity. Great attacking play, though, in the way that they're trying to open up this Honduran defense. That's what Wea told us yesterday. He said, I was watching the Canada game knowing I could have helped getting him behind. Those types of runs. His vaccination status, good enough for the French League, not good enough for Canadian Border Patrol to be allowed in the country to play in that game on Sunday. That's a foul at midfield as Lopez goes down. Center back lifting it up. Robinson there was muscled off it for a moment by Elise, able to recover. Great work by Miles Robinson. Now Luca De Torre trying to drive it on. Tripped up from behind by Kevin Lopez. Well, this is good from De Torre. Once again, good feet under pressure in your defensive part of the field to be able to evade the first challenge, drive it forward again. Draws the contact from Lopez for the foul. 
Just kind of clipped his heels at the end of that play. It's a great opportunity for this young man, 23-year-old from San Diego. Left to go join Fulham in England as a 15-year-old, now plays in the Netherlands. Just his fifth appearance for the U.S. as McKinney cuts it back. Anthony Robinson's caught for Pepe! Well, that would have been a great way to score for the first time since October, but it's out and over. Good move. The way that McKinney drives inside, opens up the space out wide for the overlapping run. The timing is good. Here's Anthony Robinson. Now he sees where the space is. So McKinney drives in. Okay. Where's, where's my overlapping run? Here it comes now, drags two defenders. That's where the space is. It's, it's a difficult one for Pepe. It's behind him, it's on his left foot. Just trying to redirect it on goal. That would have been a spectacular effort and would have needed quite, quite an effort to get it over. Just comes off his toe and up over the crossbar. But he likes the service. That's what he likes to see, to be given an opportunity. Torrey, great little move inside, hands it out for Cannon. The cross is blocked and out for a U.S. corner. Tori who comes across, Kellen Acosta's there as well. Late short. Acosta whips it in on the deck. That's going to be a foul. The U.S. was trying to win it back up high and man down for Honduras right now. Rodriguez, who's down. Oh, yeah. Gets him right on the left foot there. He's still down. Diego Rodriguez, who plays for Motagua in Honduras. That's the team that's going to be playing the Seattle Sounders in a couple of weeks in the CONCACAF Champions League. Tight Telecast is sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. soccer. First ever World Cup qualifying match here in Minnesota. You get what you pay for. If you're going to come on the 2nd of February, 5 degrees, wind chill, minus 12. And Matt Turner, we were talking about him struggling behind the play to stay warm, so he's going to come across as Rodriguez is getting looked at and get wrapped up right now and try to warm up a little bit. Yeah, he's got hand warmers, too. You can see that it just fell out of his gloves. Well, here's how it looks. So the U.S. with the early lead. Scoreless at the half between Jamaica and Costa Rica. And everyone else to play later on tonight. As we said, top three advance to the World Cup directly. So yes, Canada, yes, Mexico, it really is about Panama and to a certain extent Costa Rica. But the U.S. can with a win tonight, even when they go to Mexico City, the first game in the March window, they wouldn't need something from that game theoretically. It could be enough just to beat Panama in Orlando here on FS1, March 27th. That's the simplest pathway right now for the U.S. And they're taking care of the first part of that business right now with this eighth-minute goal from Weston McKinney. That is the March window. And that's what you don't want to have to do is go to the Azteca or go to Costa Rica, a place where the U.S. historically has never I found success, and have to get points from those games. And how big is that Panama home match potentially going to be as well, the way that they're playing? Mexico can give the U.S. a boost by beating Panama at Azteca later on tonight. Morris on the run of that loose ball just shepherds it out. And, and John, a, a big part of that conversation you're talking about the next window is why coming into this game, and even Greg Berhalter said it to us right before the game, that this is a must-win match. I mean, this is a World Cup or bust-type match for the U.S. They need the three points at home at a minimum. and couldn't quite get that away for Weston McKinney. But it's one back by Kellen Acosta. Trying to get away from Mejia right now. 
you're starting to see there are certainly more areas on the field that you're getting a little bit more ice with just the moisture that's out there. Knocked away by Maldonado there. Miles Robinson was trying to find Pepe. All right, it's a great start with the early goal. There was some good momentum. How does the U.S. sort of get back in that rhythm right now, get this second? A big part of that is speed of play. And you've seen the U.S. in moments slow the game down. Too many touches. There's going to be periods. Look, I mean, look at the possession right now. 76% for the United States. That's what you would expect. And it's okay to pick your moments when it's on. Can you play quickly? Can you find ways to break them down? If not, make sure you're smart with the ball. But for the U.S., a big part of where their success has been is the counter-pressing. So if they lose it in this type of area, squeezing it and not allowing Honduras to get out of that space. O'Shea Nation saying that Jordan Morris had Maldonado wrapped up there. Dr. Joe Mactico, former FIFA Match Commission Rules Analyst. It's been a tight whistle from O'Shea Nation tonight. Doc, what do you think of how he's handled this game? I hate to use the word inconsistent, but he's let some, you know, heavy fouls go, and he's calling some soft ones like the one we just saw, and he missed two cautionable offenses, one that the U.S. should have had for them, stopping a promising attack, and another foul where a player landed on the foot of his opponent. Well, here he's he got no help from the assistant referee who should have helped him with the blow to uh, Pepe's face. That's an easy one where the assistant referee has to help or the fourth official. Now, once he finally gets the yellow card out of his pocket, it will be shown for the first time tonight. Twice, Mejia, for arguing, is going to get a yellow. And it looked like Kaye there for the actual foul on De La Torre. So two yellow cards in that sequence and a U.S. free kick. Yeah, not for the first time tonight. De La Torre, good work driving away. He'd actually run out of options, was trying to come back and go the other way. And Kaye there, that's the foul that earned him the yellow card. And then Mejia gets the yellow card for arguing that call. It's a slightly wider, but a similar distance from where Kellen Acosta found the head of Weston McKinney in the eighth minute. I thought you were going to go with the Miles Robinson goal from... Even close to 10 yards away, but he gets it in. Morris trying to get to it. Zimmerman was there. Walker Zimmerman, 2 nil U.S. Oh, he said Zimmerman was the U.S.'s biggest threat on set pieces, and Honduras just drop off too far. And you're going to see Jordan Morris challenges for the first one, and then the ball's a live second ball. Zimmerman does so well here. You're going to see he's back to goal. He's able to turn it, get it out of his feet, and do enough to get it past Lopez. Lopez is actually asking for a foul there on Zimmerman for a potential push-off. We'll see here if it's enough for that. I mean, he's, there's, there is some contact. Both of them are challenging for the ball. I don't think this one's going to come back. Great work by Walker Zimmerman. A face of intensity, passion, leadership. Coming up with a big moment here for the U.S. to find that second goal off a set piece. And they are checking it, so they are holding this to see if deemed enough of a push there that that's clear and obvious to be whistled back for a foul. As it stands, Walker Zimmerman's third goal for the U.S. first in three years. Eric Miranda of Mexico, assisted by Ricardo Montero, very experienced international referee from Costa Rica, are having a look. And again, as ever in those set pieces, you're checking for possible offsides at a couple different moments. Was there a push in there? Yeah, and it, it would be interesting, too, because does Jordan Morris get a touch on it first? But, I mean, th this is the call. Is that a foul there? I, I don't think so, because I think you, you can see that Maldonado is going across his body and he's off balance trying to reach for it. When you slow it down like that in real slow-mo, you see, you know, Zimmerman's got hands all over them. But in reality, in real time, the two of them are battling for it and trying to jostle for position. I think that's, yeah, they're gonna say a goal, yeah. That's the right call. Now Walker Zimmerman, the captain tonight, 
25th international appearance. A guy that was not originally called up for the October qualifiers. It was only when Tim Ream had to pull out for family matters that Zimmerman was brought back in, and he's been a regular since. Two-time reigning MLS Defender of the Year with the second goal of the night for the Americans and a must-win game to keep this World Cup qualifying campaign on track. McKinney on the turn, couldn't get through cleanly. And now Elise, danger moment here. Honduras on the run, Kevin Lopez. Miles Robinson trying to slow him up. Lopez deflected across, Zimmerman stooping low. Morris, attention to space there for Pepe, and it breaks down. A yeah, big key for the U.S., five minutes left in the half, not to concede a goal. And for Weston McKinney in that moment, to be a little bit smarter, not take touches when everybody's in front of the ball. You've only got a couple back. It allowed Honduras to have that transition moment. The U.S. did well defensively getting back, but you want to see a guy like McKinney, who's a real leader on this team, take control, slow it down, but not take make uh, take mistakes and take chances in the wrong part of the field. Strong challenge by Anthony Robinson on Kevin Lopez there. And a few Hondurans are going to come plead the case to the referee, O'Shea Nisha. Just going to be a throw, though. Morris again working hard defensively. Robinson will the find Weston McKinney. And Acosta just gets rid of it. Now they're able to control our way up. Five minutes to go in the half. Last time the U.S. host Honduras in a World Cup qualifier. It's almost five years ago now, March 2017 in San Jose. The U.S. were 3-0 up after half an hour. It was a record-breaking 6-0 win on the night. Clint Dempsey hat trick. Christian Pulisic had a goal as well. Keep in mind, the first tiebreaker, if it gets to that point in the qualifying standings, goal differential. Way up, crossing in, Jordan Morris trying to get there. Kaye got it clear. Way resets. Back in for Tenatori, poked away, and Luis Lopez there to collect. scored as many goals in the first half tonight as they did in the prior 10 qualifying games combined. Anthony Robinson picks that up, gets it back for Morris. Get around the corner though. Mejia going long, Miles Robinson trying to track it over his shoulder, at least for company, who dumps it to turf. Robinson going down awkwardly there at the end of the play. U.S. already playing tonight without center back Chris Richards. Ankle injury in the game against Canada. He's out tonight. Again, one of the best players in Houston Dynamo's history. Well, Brad Davis's old record for combined goals and assists in a season. Which is fantastic for them in four years. Tenatori just got on the end of that ball. Diego Rodriguez could get on the end of it. LUS out on the break. That's way out to the outside. Pepe's coming forward. McKenney's coming forward. Morris is the trailer. Where resets. Delatore from Cannon for Wea. And the U.S. grab a third before the break. For Cannon, 
Beat the offside trap. Cannons cross. Stamped away by Maldonado. Delatore wins it back with Kellen Acosta. Way and nowhere to go. 1v3 right now. Delatore clipping it up too far for Cannon. Second half has kicked off between Jamaica and Costa Rica still scoreless. Costa Rica not winning that game. Panama losing later tonight in Mexico City and the U.S. winning. That's a very good night and a good end of the window for the Americans. right now with way up to his right and the numbers come forward Tim way on the outside and Alvier crosses blocked US corner that was a strange one wasn't it Figueroa I think took a knock a couple minutes ago and just decided to back off Ricardo Pepe who had 10 15 yards of space able to bring the ball down finds way and the US get one more opportunity from a corner it'll be an outswinging ball Kellen Acosta who does he get assists uh, to assist I think the, the first one Definitely. The second one took a couple bounces, but his service has been really good on set pieces. Can he provide one more here? Look for Zimmerman at that near post. Final 30 seconds of the half. And Costa in. Zimmerman free header. It popped up off Maldonado. It's not clear that a Tory couldn't get there. Zimmerman trying to keep it and does. Thought about shooting for a moment, but it was on his left foot. Tim Weah. Weah, that was blocked as he was trying to feed that in for Pepe. That's going to be a foul there on That's Anthony Robinson. That's a smart Robinson. foul because it, it wasn't egregious enough to for any hint of a yellow card there, but Robinson just had his hands on him and stopped Lopez from going anywhere, stopped the counterattack, knowing that we're right at the end of the first half here and probably see the halftime whistle. Donato will lift it forward. Robinson there, decked by Kyoto. And that will be the final action of exactly the kind of first half the United States needed tonight. An early goal from Weston McKinney. Their first on a set piece of the entire qualifying campaign. Doubled up by Walker Zimmerman in the later stages of the half. 2-0 on Honduras at the break on a frigid night in St. Paul, Minnesota. And we'll see in the second half if the U.S. can really run this thing a bit higher. Rob, Mo, and Alexi on the other side, 45 minutes down. Five to go here in the Twin Cities, United States, two on Duras Nil. Welcome back to St. Paul, Minnesota. The United States with two in the opening 45. They are up 2-0 on Honduras in this critical World Cup qualifier. All the nations in action. Two of them still to come later tonight. Jamaica, Costa Rica still scoreless in the second half in Jamaica. We welcome you back to St. Paul. Lexi Lawless, Modu, and Rob Stone here with you talking to U.S. manager Greg Berhalter yesterday. He said one of the goals, get an early goal. What do they do? They get their earliest goal in this round of World Cup qualifying. How did they get it? Lexi Lawless, I'm giving you a chance to gloat right now. Say it, my man. Set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. They are back. Baby, this is so beautiful. This is so American into the box. Weston McKinney still for me. 
the best player in this window, getting up, look at that, right in the corner, and just like that, 1-0 for the U.S. Oh, warms the cockles of my red-headed American heart. That was in the eighth minute, McKinney's ninth international goal. Tim Weah almost got one in the 20th. Yeah, such good positioning, quick turn, he had the quick look over his shoulder, tried to sneak it into that far post, big save there by Lopez, it should have been a corner kick. They gave him a goal kick, but good early work there by Tim Weah. U.S. wanted to get behind that back line. They did here in the 26th. They were. Kellen Costa, I thought, was wonderful this afternoon. Look at that nice little ball in there. Weah just can't get it out of his feet. Another opportunity, but you know, stretching that defense and providing a different type of look for this U.S. team. Pepe can't get the rebound there, but again, more and more opportunities. And this man here, you talked about him already, Weston McKinney. What a presence he has on this team. This is what I like from Pepe. He's in a good position. Instead of awkward hype for him, he's been in the box, alert, active, trying to get some, some service there. He finally gets it, can't get it on target, but I like his, his positioning there. And, and then a set piece here, 37th minute, Walker Zimmerman, his third international goal. How does this goal, Lexi, change the face of the game? Oh, relief, you know? Rob Stone, in my expert opinion, two goals are better than one goal, <laughs> especially when it comes from a center back. Oh, I thought Walker had a wonderful half, too. Yeah. Weston McKenney's impact and influence in this game, how do you describe it? Well, well you, we talked about Christian not playing, not getting the start today. So who needed to step up? What are the other big leaders? And Weston McKinney has been immense. I mean, when you watch this guy play, his influence on this team, it grows and grows and grows. You can tell he's a guy who has a tremendous amount of confidence. It's a set-piece goal, but beyond that, it's his, his involvement, his build-up play, his combativeness, and he just gives this team a different life and a different feel. This is a young, inexperienced team, but they are mature enough to see this game out. They got the two goals in the first half, something we haven't seen. It's a situation that they haven't been in, but now they just have to keep the ball. They're going to get more opportunities into the second half and get that three points. You've done incredible work in that first half. You guys enjoying this game so far, huh? What's not to enjoy if you're a fan of the red, white, and blue? McKenney, Zimmerman, too long, USA. We are just 292 days away from our exclusive coverage of the FIFA World Cup coming away here on Fox Sports and the U.S. Men's National Team getting closer and closer to securing a berth for their 11th ever FIFA World Cup appearance after 45 minutes in beautiful, warm, balmy St. Paul. Walker Zimmerman and the U.S. up 2-0, second 45 on the backside. Our coverage tonight is sponsored by Volkswagen, the presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. 2-0 at the break for the United States over Honduras. It's a cliche, but this is a must-win game if the U.S. is going to get back to the World Cup in November in Qatar. Costa Rica have just in the last few minutes gotten a goal against Jamaica. This keeps Costa Rica very much alive. It eliminates Jamaica. El Salvador and Canada, a game that earlier today, El Salvador's players were threatening not to play in a dispute with their federation. It will go ahead in just a few minutes. In fact, about 30 minutes to kick off there. Later tonight, Mexico hosting Panama, a U.S. win, a Panama loss, even the Costa Rica win. U.S. is still feeling very good about life going into the final set of games at the end of March to get back to the World Cup. And we get a second half TIFO coming up right now. Oh, what, is the, what is the bonus TIFO? Listen, these fans have done tremendous. As much as you can say, yes, they're used to it. Not necessarily outdoor sporting events in this part of the country at this time of the year. Temperature hovering right around zero degrees as the second half will get going. It's just under 80 degrees right now in San Pedro Sula. That's where Honduras came from. That was part of the point. Whereas the U.S. had a short flight from Hamilton, Ontario on Monday. Similar conditions the whole stretch. Honduras, 10 hours of travel on Monday. They get in 80 degrees colder late Monday night. They did not come to the stadium at all before the game. They didn't come out here for practice. They practiced in an indoor bubble, Minnesota United's facility. And, and by the way, they're taking every yeah. last second of halftime because there's only one team on the field right now, and it's the, the U.S. team. The warm-up for Honduras was about half as long as for the U.S. They came out very late. They came in very early. They were supposed to be out here about 90 seconds ago. Matches like these are very specific timelines of when things are supposed to happen. Yeah, so this is an interesting part of the discussion about a home field advantage, right? You, you and I were talking yesterday, and I said, well, 
look, Honduras, the fact that they're not coming out and training and being out in the open air and coming to the stadium, already that's saying to the U.S., oh, you know, this is going to be a cold game. We're trying to hide ourselves from some of these elements. And, you know, taking the extra time here at, at halftime, this is a Honduran team. We don't have to remind you, they're out. They have no chance of making it to the World Cup. They're down 2-0 at halftime. Interesting to see what's going to come from them in the second, second half. Already it looks like we're going to see two changes from them. Lozano, one of them. They've got a oh, yeah, three changes. Yeah, wow. Well. Anthony Lozano, who we thought was going to start this game, he's going to come in. Brian he's a Roches, dangerous player. Former designated player for Orlando City, who started the game against El Salvador. He's going to come in. And a goalkeeper change as well as Luis Lopez is going to be replaced by Edric Menjivar, who started the game against El Salvador on Sunday. It was not just a game that eliminated them. It wasn't just that they lost to their rivals, El Salvador. It was the first time they'd ever lost, first time they'd ever even conceded a goal at home to El Salvador in a World Cup qualifying match. So we'll see who the changes are for. Romel Kyoto has not yet come out. So you wonder if that's one of the players is going to be taken off. Yeah, and indeed that is the case for Anthony Lozano. And he'll go straight up front. Plays as a striker in Spain with Cadiz in La Liga. And the flip side is for the Americans, of course, they're doing an awful lot of standing around right now, trying to stay warm before the second half kicks off. The other one's Rodriguez, who took that ankle knock in the first half. Maybe he was nursing that. So three changes at the break for Honduras. We expect to see Christian Pulisic in the second half, perhaps Yunus Musa as well for the United States. And again, it's not just necessarily about winning. Goal differential, primary tiebreaker in the World Cup qualifying standings. Goal scored, that's the secondary tiebreaker. So the U.S. can do themselves even more of a favor in this second half by pushing on for this, a second half which is underway. And I think that's going to be the key here, John, at the start of the second half. What do you want to see if you're a U.S. fan? Do you want to see the, this team come out of the gates, set the tone once again, press up high, not give Honduras any type of hope or think that they have an opportunity in this game and get after them and find that third goal, and then you could see this score run up. Now, we have to go back to the first half. Both goals are on set pieces. So while the U.S. were better in the attack, I thought there were some good dynamic movements. The final ball was still lacking. Can they really get in behind the defense? Can they get some cutback ball, some good service? And get Ricardo Pepe a goal as well. You know, it cost him a big kick there. Sort of broke down with a 1-2. He's a bit slow to get going back in the rhythm. McKinney releasing Anthony Robinson now. Wide it goes for Jordan Morris. Morris working on the outside of Maldonado. Morris gets the cross in. Delatore got in front of Figueroa. But it's cleared away by Delgado. Comes to battling with Lozano just on the field. Lozano wins the ball. Weston McKinney shoulder to shoulder in front of the referee. And Lozano, though, won it back. Now here's Roches. Coming forward, at least to the outside, takes it himself, puts it in the stands. All right, Rodolfo, what'd you hear from Greg Berhalter coming out for the second half? Well, I asked him about his thoughts on the first half. Uh, he told me it was a good control of the game, good to be up 2 0 in the scoreboard, but they needed more crosses into the box and getting in behind. Was a big focus. One of the things that Berhalter talked to us about yesterday, moments where even he was saying, wait, why are we making that decision? Why aren't we playing that pass? Why aren't we making that run? And Weston McKinney talking yesterday about the game plan being good. It was a matter of the players' inability to execute that game plan in certain moments against Canada. Anthony Robinson for Ricardo Pepe. How great would it be for him to get a goal for a first time in 14 games for club and country since October? Way and Al. Delatore on the overlap. Delatore has it now. Delatore's cross knocked down. Delgado cleaning that up under some pressure. Omar Elvir now able to find the pass for Mejia. Miles Robinson 1v1 on the other end with Rochez defending by himself right there. Does enough. Way up. Trying to control that ball now for Cannon. Cannon cut back into where Lopez was, able to keep it though. 
A reset for Wea does. Wea's cross blocked on the shoulder of Mejia. Helen Acosta. Way up for Cannon. It's a little hesitation right now from U.S. players being in positions to put that ball in behind. Some of these early crosses force Honduras to finish back towards their own goal. And when you hesitate like that, the strikers, the runs are off, the positioning's different, and then you have to recycle it and get back the other way. So short window of opportunity. Can they put some more dangerous crosses in the box? Yeah, the Tory wants it. It was a bit behind him. He had a backtrack for it. Wide for Wea. Gets the cross in. Happy was in the area. Maldonado sends it in behind for a U.S. corner. Well, that's a good ball by Wea because he doesn't take it all the way to the end line. You're going to see he sets up his defender, takes him inside a little bit. There's a touch out and then bend it in towards that near post. Good looking ball. Pepe just missing out. Good clearance away, but it'll be a U.S. corner. Alan Acosta's created both goals tonight with set piece service. Hendrick Menkivar on as the goalkeeper substitution of the half. Flicked up in the air, scramble of bodies, and Rosano able to get it clear. Wea. McKinney, back for Wea. Back for McKinney. Gonna pick out an option, comes inside. Tim Wea saved by Menkivar. For a corner. Oh, wow. Two man game here. McKenney and Wea. This is phenomenal. Pass and move. One touch. Unbalanced defenses. Look at this little one two around the corner. Now Wea is attracted. Two defenders inside. McKenney's looking. Do I have an option? And then Wea senses where the back line was. They all start to step up in these space in behind. And I've been impressed with Tim Wea throughout this game of just being willing to run, stretch defenses. And the finish couldn't quite match up. Need a little bit of finesse and composure in that moment. Good, great play. Here it comes again from Acosta, a bit deeper. Menhivar out to get it, knocked down, and a whistle has gone. And an offside decision is the call on that header, I suppose, that got knocked down. And Weston McKinney moving a little bit awkwardly right now. Uh, I don't see any offside players in that, if that was what the call was for. That was the indication from the referee, his hand signal, and the assistant referee had his hand up. You see that often called for a foul. Now, the shot was blocked off the line, but still a curious refereeing decision again tonight. Pepe for McKinney. Is that going to find a way? And no. Levere I mean, stepped up. McKinney's freestyling right now. It, and. If he's doing it in the right moments like they just did in the final third, it's so good when you pass and you're already anticipating the movement of your teammate and you're coming inside and you're just bouncing the ball. I mean, that, that's how you break down a low block defense. Way I got tripped up. That will be a free kick for the U.S. And to circle back, I think what the call might have actually been is that the corner went out, out of, of play and then yeah. came back in. That was what I think the referee was signaling there. But another set piece chance for the U.S. Kellen Acosta comes to get it. We hear coaches say this all the time in a 2 0 game, the significance of the next goal. If Honduras scores, it's 2 1. It's getting a bit nervy. If the U.S. gets the next goal, it's 3 0. It's game over. So can the U.S. cash this in? Weston McKinney trying to go unnoticed there at the back post. Kellen Acosta standing over it. He played in the coldest game in MLS history three years ago in Colorado. He's playing in the coldest game in U.S. national team history tonight. So Honduras defending this set piece a lot deeper than they had previously. So interesting to see where Acosta tries to bend this one in. There's a gap at that near post as well, right across that front post if Zimmerman can run across. Acosta trying to hook that in and catch Medivar. He's forced to push it out and over. I think that was going in. Now, I'm not sure if that was by design or not, but certainly the way that this ball starts, it starts really far out wide to the right, and I think that was going to drop under the crossbar. I mean, that'll keep a goalkeeper rooted to his line. 
Third corner in quick succession. And Hemar comes to get it, gets a punch, Denatori. Back for Acosta. Flip this in, had a redirected by Robinson right at Menhivar. Third save for him since coming on as a halftime substitute. Slip air from Maldonado. Good pressure by Pepe, highest up the field. Well, the decision to keep your best player on the bench looks a lot smarter when it's 2-0 right now. Great world are talking about a guy that is just tired, has played a lot of games, trying to take the pressure off him, trying to like, let him come into a game when things are open up. Defenders are tired. But still a decision, even though he had it mapped out on his head last night to us, Greg Berhalter was still debating it, hesitant to pull the trigger all the way. It was a big move that a Tory driving forward. Rolls it wide for Way, a cannon charging on the overlap. Way elects to come back inside, wrong side of Kellen Acosta. Great work by Acosta to win it back. And McKinney to dance around at least. What it goes for Anthony Robinson. He'll lift the cross up. Way attacks. It's off the top of his head. Give it away at the back. Way a lovely footwork to find Cannon. McKinney. And miss hit. I think it's his first misplaced pass of the night, Weston McKinney. He's a guy who said in the press conference yesterday, we as a team are at our best when we're having fun. It was something echoed by Tim Weah when we talked to him last night. The brotherhood he talked about. These guys getting in and joining. He said, yes, we understand the work, the seriousness of these games. But when we're playing at our best, it's when the mood is good as Figueroa's clearance is knocked but, it out to the Tory. You know, let's not forget, a big part of Weston McKenney's story and journey with this U.S. men's national team, going back to the first game that we did in Nashville, in Canada, when right before kickoff, he was sent home from the team and then went back to Juventus, was out of the team for a little bit. I mean, for, for a young player at a big club in a big moment, to handle that the way that he has to earn back the trust and respect of his coaches and most importantly his teammates in moments he's let his play on the field do the talking and he has become indispensable for Juventus so much so that Allegri and he was linked with a transfer move away at one point saying he's going nowhere he's important to our club he's important as ever to this U.S. men's national team the best player on the team right now and comes up with a huge goal when they need him so you know, you, you, you think about what people were saying about Weston McKinney in that moment, and the way that Greg Berhalter handled it, the team handled it, and here they are now, and what a great response from him. Morris under some pressure right now, poked away, and it's gonna be out for a U.S. throw. It's a moment that could have gone really bad for everyone involved, if not handled right by Greg Berhalter, if not handled right by Weston McKinney. And you gotta give credit to Berhalter, for sticking to his guns. Weston McKinney, the way he's come back, that's a big part of this. This is still an exceptionally young team. It's still a young coach from an international perspective. Easy to forget, a decade ago, he was actually, Greg Warhalter, the first American ever to coach a team in Europe. He was a head coach of Hammerby, a team in Sweden. In fact, he said yesterday, an old Swedish phrase, there is no cold weather, only cold clothing. <laughs> His ability to shepherd these young men growing in their careers back to the World Cup. That's what it's all about. Way almost got through there. Well, in the second half here, not many times in which we've seen the ball go into the U.S. defensive part of the field. I think you'll see some subs in the next couple of minutes. It'll be right for a guy like Pulisic playing against a lower block and finding ways to unlock the defense. Talked about it a lot, a lot of possession. Can they find that third one, which will be really important goal? They spent a lot of time at practice yesterday on drills of these exact situations. 25 yards and in. How do you break down that low block? Spano Figueroa gets rid of it. Zimmerman knocks it down. Over the top it goes, looking for Rochez. Miles Robinson settles for Acosta. And he escapes Delgado. Now Cannon, way of running forward. And we're trying to play in the middle. Might be a chance for way up. Still might be a chance. Pepe steps in, it's Morris in fact. Here's Pepe now, puts it wide. Well, 
a comedy of errors and it leads to that chance in the end. Reggie Cannon had a great opportunity to play the ball in behind. He under hits it and then it's just look at look at Jordan Morris and Pepe at the back post there. Wea gets tangled in. Morris comes over and help recognize. Okay, in this moment I don't have a shot. They have two players weak side. Pepe in that moment, this is a guy that wants a goal badly because he could have laid this ball off to the top of the box. He's going back, it's away, he doesn't get the cleanest of strikes on it and pulls it past the target. But it, that's the strike of a striker who wants to hit the back of the net. And I don't mind it. Take the shot there. Well, great Berhalter said with Pepe, a lot has come his way. Okay, you got to remember, Ricardo Pepe, go back to the summer, he's 18, and we all went, golly gee whiz, he made the MLS All-Star team. Isn't that great? And then you get called in the national team. And then you debut in Honduras, leading a comeback when the qualifying campaign was at risk already, that they came from behind to beat Honduras 3-1. Mistake by Figueroa. Morris has it now. Head down. Jordan Morris saves. Way is going to get there off the head of Medhivar. He Still goes in. down. He's the down. ball is in play. The goalkeeper is down with a head injury. That should be a straightforward whistle. O'Shea Nation, it took him a moment to recognize the situation. So Menhivar, who came on as a halftime substitute as the goalkeeper for Honduras, he is now down. And the chances are opening up now for the United States. And Jordan Morris has a great look at goal here. He had Pepe who pulled, peeled out to the left-hand side, opened up the middle of the field, drives at this Honduran defense, and just doesn't get a clean strike on it. You'll see at the end of this, it's just the U.S. winning the ball back in the attacking part of the field. And here's Morris now. He had Pepe out to his left, just puts the head down and, and goes for it. Just kind of gets under it to where it's right at Menhivar. And then it's on the second one right there from Tim Weah that he takes it off the face to the ground. And you're absolutely right, John. I mean, when you see the head injury there, it should not even have been allowed to play. I mean, Tim Weah was even just standing with the ball thinking, Okay, the whistle's going to come at some point here. Yeah, he Good back to see to he's his back team. up, yeah. Well, when Pepe scored in Honduras, he was the second youngest American ever to score in qualifying. Only Christian Pulisic was younger. Then he scored twice against Jamaica. Then he was the MLS Young Player of the Year. Then it was a $20 million move to Augsburg in the German Bundesliga. More money paid by a European club than ever before for an American out of MLS. That is a fire hose to come Ricardo Pepe's way. Just turned 19 in recent weeks, and a lot for him to handle and adjust to. It's a wonderful story. He's a tremendous young man, left El Paso, his home at 13 to go to Dallas, has become a star, and just trying to get his feet underneath him is another substitution here for Honduras. They're gonna bring Kevin Lopez off. This is their fourth substitution of five. They're going to bring on Devon Garcia for his international debut. One time Orlando City signing in 2016, though he only ever played for their reserve team. And it looks like we are on the verge of seeing Christian Pulisic as we dip inside the final half hour tonight here in St. Paul, Minnesota. So we'll restart with the drop ball after the head injury. Zimmerman resetting for Cannon. Wea. Wea gets that in. Pepe slipped. Morris got to it. Little scoop there for Weston McKinney in tight quarters. Gets it away for Cannon. Wea once again. Way is crossed, knocked down there. Garcia just on the field. Cannon coming from behind to pick the pocket of Elvir. Nowhere for Kellen Acosta to go backwards. Wea rolled in for McKenney. He's got a little bit of space here. Close down. McKenney back in for Wea. Way it cuts back. There's some tired legs out there for Honduras right now. I mean, they're they're not closing down that extra couple of yards now when the U.S. have the ball and McKenney's said, making you, runs in. How do you take advantage of that? Yeah, well, they're getting close. It's that last pass, that last ball. They've had some great looks the last couple of minutes. In the United States is just the execution. You know, Pepe's touches behind him. He's going away from goal. Jordan Morris 
doesn't strike it cleanly when they have a good look. So you get the feeling that it's coming, just missing a piece of quality. I mean, if I'm Christian Pulisic coming in this game right now, you're thinking, I'm going to get chances. He's coming on next. Jordan Morris will make way, and that was the plan. Jordan Morris coming off the second ACL tear of his career. Go as long as he can, soften up, tire out the hunter in defense, and then unleash Pulisic. Robinson. Last chance for Morris to make an impact. Here he is on the ball. Move by one there on the outside. Acosta drives it in. And a Torrey couldn't pick it back up. One back by Anthony Robinson. Robinson's cross. Not going to find Pepe. Stabbed away by Figueroa. And here comes the sub. Here comes Pulisic. You saw the 11th substitute appearance of Polistic's career. And he gets a foul. The ball. <laughs> He's immediately fouled. Four prior goals as a substitute, including, don't forget, it was just in November. He came off the bench to score the winner against yeah. Mexico. And look, he knows every time he's on the field, every touch, he's under the microscope from U.S. fans, from opposing fans, from opposing players who set the team stone straight away here and fouling Pulisic within five seconds of him being on the field. I'm, I'm interested to see what type of response you get from Christian Pulisic. I'm not worried about his sharpness, and that, that, that comes. He's an incredibly talented player, but can he find a way now and just show what he can do, get his team a third goal in this game? Kellen Acosta to take the ensuing free kick. Both goals for the U.S. tonight, starting from dead ball situations. McKinney and Zimmerman, the two scorers. Costa drives it in, easily cleared away by Lozano. And clearance is out. Quickly a thought on Jordan Morris. Big night for him coming back. What would you think? In and around the goal could be better, a little bit sharper, but I thought over the course of the game, he did what Greg Berhalter would have asked from him. He was stretching in behind, making runs. He was dangerous. He was combining well with Anthony Robinson. But he'll be a little bit frustrated, I think, himself in those killer moments where strikers and wingers want to be dangerous that he didn't find that killer touch. But great to see him back out there starting. And I think he'll be pleased with that more than anything. His first start for the U.S. in a couple of years in a competitive match. Before you corrected me. <laughs> That assumes I was listening to you, <laughs> yeah. Here's Wea. Wea running on it. there on the outside who steps in to knock it out. And here comes another U.S. corner. And it's interesting, even with Pulisic now on the field, it will be Kellen Acosta who continues to take the set pieces tonight. That should be. On his way to LAFC. Big off-season trade from Colorado when this camp is done. Playing for the U.S. legend, Steve Chirondolo. Acosta's ball in, flicked along by Pepe Zimmerman, and Pulisic! Christian Pulisic, 3-0. He saw his celebration after, and he's going to downplay it, but this is a big moment for Christian Pulisic and this team. And another ball on a set piece. Pepe does well to get across at the near post. That keeps the ball alive. 
gets in front of that first defender, and then it comes off of Walker. Zimmerman bounces around, and Pulisic, I think maybe that's his second touch of the game, and that is a lethal finish. Takes it on the half volley, excellent technique. Gets over the top of the ball. I mean, he's at a standstill, and it just falls to him. Nobody on the post. Bang in the corner. He's saying, hey, come on, come on. That is not the official U.S. soccer recommendation. <laughs> I think at that point and at this point of the game, and I'm sure a few beverages, that he's not feeling much. <laughs> Well, Roach has on the other end, just dribbles it out of play. And it is a great moment for Christian Pulisic. 18th career international goal, nine of which have come in World Cup qualifiers. It's easy to forget. Christian Pulisic, even though he was a teenager, he was a monster in that last World Cup qualifying campaign. It was not because of anything Christian Pulisic didn't do that the U.S. couldn't get to the World Cup. It's his second of this qualifying campaign. Now it's rolled in and Zimmerman knocks it away. That's a Torre with Pulisic in front of him. Long switch for Wea. McKinney's inside. He was trying to go first time. Alvier read that well, knocked it away. Lozano's there in front of Acosta. To work by McKenney again to dig it back out. Final Costa Rica huge win 1 0 over Jamaica that keeps them very much alive in World Cup qualifying. It officially eliminates Jamaica with three games to go. Canada and El Salvador just about to kick off if they haven't know already in the last few moments. Yeah, great response from Costa Rica because last window it looked like it was going to be four teams it was going to be US, Canada, Mexico, and Panama. And Costa Rica coming back. And to reiterate, the U.S. finishes at Costa Rica, and they want nothing to do with that game, there. needing yes. a win, needing a tie, something like that. Here's Cannon. Mexico and Panama kick off in an hour in Mexico City. Mexico could do the U.S. a favor tonight with a win, and they're under intense pressure right now as well, Mexico. So they need it for their own sake right now. Brendan Aronson. Preparing to come on. Zimmerman out duel there by Rochez. Lozano on the run. Body goes for Rochez. Elise is on the far side. Rochez on Kellen Acosta. Zimmerman there to help. Support from Elvier. First time cross. Met by Reggie Cannon. Now could the U.S. take advantage? Not quite. Chip forward for Elise. Around the corner it goes. And a return got knocked away. Good work by Del Torre. He's had a good game. To defend. You know, he was one when we were at practice and looking at who was potentially going to start. Eunice Musa, Greg Berhalter telling us who had played a lot of minutes, and especially recently. Here comes Pulisic. Pulisic now. Pepe's inside. He almost got through that cleanly. Well, that certainly is the deepest part of the field for the U.S., and we sort of assume this midfield of Musa, McKenney, and Adams is set in stone, so it's a it's a great opportunity for Denatore. Yeah, and his first start. And before this, it only played 13 minutes in World Cup qualifying. And talking about his skill set, you've seen it on display tonight, Delatore, just tempo setting, 
good passing, keeping things simple when he has to, getting out of pressure in tight spaces, good feet, good decision making. So a really solid night for him. And when he was given a big opportunity by Greg Berhalter starting this game. Way wins another corner. Now we've seen all three goals from dead ball situations, two of them from knockdowns, including that Pulisic goal just about seven minutes ago. Nivar has been busy, four saves that he's made. A goal allowed, a knock to the head since coming on at the half. Well, you'd think that maybe Honduras would learn off these three set pieces or that the U.S. have scored from, of getting a grip of that front post. And I'm, I'm looking right now, and it's still wide open there in the front. You're going to see U.S. runners getting across. Kellen Acosta has been picking it out time after time. This time it's Lozano. Acosta, the outswinger. Zimmerman was bumped off it, knocked down. De Torre, that's way and now. Way and trying to dribble through the double team and couldn't do so. McKinney wins it back with Denatore's help. Pulisic in for Wayam. Menhivar's off his line. McKinney picks it up as Wayam is knocked to the turf. McKinney weaves his wall. Oh, it's going to go the other way. I wonder if it was for something after, because I, I, I'm with you. I, I felt like it was Wayam that hard. was fouled. Yeah, I thought it was Tim Wayam. So it must have been something that happened right after the play. Maybe Wea kicks out out of frustration for not getting the call. So there's the challenge. All right, there's, I mean, there's the kick on Figueroa and goes down. So, okay, so there's, that's the one that I was the, thought was the foul. And then you're going to see the right leg of Wea kicking on Minor Figueroa. And that's what the foul is for. And that's what the yellow card's for. So Wea in the book. Brendan Aronson preparing to come on. Jesus Ferreira will be coming on in a moment as well. This fascinating battle of these wide players and Wea and Aronson. Gio Reyna when he can be fit again as he's battling an injury, wasn't called in. Jordan Morris making his way into the picture, coming off his injury. Some very fun options at different parts of the field for Great Burhalter right now. With a quarter hour to go, the U.S. will bring on Aronson and Ferreira. Ricardo Pepe's nine is done. Didn't get the goal that would have done him a world of good. What'd you see from Pepe this evening? Worked incredibly hard for the team. I think back to goal play can still improve at times and being strong. And you saw Honduras really getting stuck into him and kicking it. You can see his body language. I think he's frustrated that he didn't hit the back of the net. Had a couple half chances. His best chance of the game was the one here in the second half with his right foot. And you see Berhalter talking to him after. And you're trying to pick him up. You're trying to hit his confidence. Strikers go through these spells, especially young players like Ricardo Pepe, who's gone for the big money move. We talked all about it. But you got to find a way. And you have to battle through these moments. you got to find confidence, dig deep. And when you get that one, it just seems to open up for you. He hasn't been able to find it now. Off back to Germany and potentially come back in the next window a lot hotter. But Ferreira's going to get an opportunity. It is a position the U.S. has to figure out before the World Cup. They have as many goals from their outside backs as they do from their center forwards in qualifying. You see Aronson on the field as well. Now with Adams not playing Son, Aronson the only guy that's playing every game of the qualifiers. And where does Jesus Ferreira fit in? Going back even to a year ago in the Olympic qualifying process, Greg Berhalter and the staff, they love Jesus Ferreira in that center forward role, even though it's not the role he tends to play for FC Dallas, where they just gave him a big designated player contract. Where does Ferreira potentially fit in? We talk about all the different options of the number nine. Yeah, they, I mean, he has a different skill set to, to really any of the other players at that position when you think about Josh Sargent in the mix as well, who got his first goals in the Premier League for Norwich. And you're right, John. I mean, we're, we're going to be, we're not even going to be talking about some of the players that are potentially going to be in the mix for the World Cup should the U.S. qualify. And it is a position, though, where you'd like to consistently have one player and say, that's our guy. You've seen signs from a number of different players, but nobody's really grabbed that position and said, that's my spot. I'm the number nine, I'm the striker, and I'm going to score 10, 15 goals for the U.S. men's national team. That'll be an interesting one for the March qualifiers. 
Daryl DK picking up the injury. Does Jordan Pifak come back in? Does Josh Sargent come back in? Time his goals first of the season to the roster coming out the other day. Here's Callan Acosta once again. Can the U.S. make it four from dead balls? Ben Hebar tracking an awkward punch. McKinney in traffic. Aronson muscled off it. Denatori trying to get it. He's tripped up off the ball. And McKinney just retreats it. Anthony Robinson looking to reset. Zimmerman knocks it down. Here comes Brendan Aronson. Got inside of Elvin. O'Shea Nation says no, unless the VAR sees something that the referee didn't. Well, Zimmerman does well to stay up after the set piece and keep this ball alive to head it down to Brendan Aronson. And the Honduran players are saying it's a dive. We'll get a good look, because here's Aronson inside the box. Owner doesn't make the first challenge. It's there from Figueroa. And he gets beat with a little stutter step from Aronson, but the question is going to be... They're holding the goal kick, though, so they're taking a look at it. And now Aronson having to be separated from Alfredo Mejia. And this is, again, a change. They did not have VAR ready yet in the fall. This was brought in just for this window of qualifiers. Yeah, the question is going to be, is there enough contact to, or a push to warrant the foul here on... On Aronson, I don't think so. I think he's a little off balance there, and he's he's trying to feel contact, hoping for more actually to win the penalty. So, I think a good decision for a no call and a penalty. Picked up here by Delgado. Alberts Elise now going to run on Anthony Robinson, who's backing off him. Elise driving in. Elise clips it along. Aronson was tracking back. Delatore. Ferreira furthest forward. Delatore didn't like his options in the field. Tori with Cannon for company. Instead, it's inside for Aronson. He's fouled. That's a foul. By Minor Figueroa. Absolutely a foul this time. As soon as Aronson gets a touch on the ball, Figueroa just steamrolls him from the back here, right through him. That's a frustration type foul there from the veteran, 38 years old. Yeah, he was already a professional when Brennan Aronson was born. <laughs> Aronson's 21. He's old. I played against him. Figueroa has been a pro <laughs> for 22 years. Released by Houston. He's a free agent right now. Operators are standing by. You know, it's an interesting spot here. The set piece from Costa. They've been dangerous on every set piece, but it's also close enough where you could try and test that near post, maybe on a direct strike. Like what he did a little bit earlier. Yep. As Menhebar was sort of trying to cheat out. Menhebar is staying a little bit closer to his line right now. Costa hooks it in. Aronson holds it in, whistle goes for a foul. It's Miles Robinson, it looked like who Menhivar found. Well, Menhivar <laughs> came in at halftime and boy, he's been through the ringer, hasn't he? Got hit early in the face by Wea. Every single set piece that he's coming off his line, he's taking contact. And I don't see a foul there. I mean, it's Menhivar who's the one who's the aggressive one coming for the punch. And I mean, Robinson's making an honest challenge at the ball. He's up in the air. And if anything, it's Menhivar who ends up with his momentum taking out Miles Robinson. But more often than not, the goalkeepers get the benefit of the doubt on those. Uh, Rodolfo, I guess the, the first question is, what are you seeing? How's the U.S. keeping warm? But also, uh, how are you doing? Uh, are you a popsicle yet? What's life like down in the field? Almost, almost. Even Greg is starting to warm up just to keep, uh, you know, the blood flowing. Uh, just to get a sense of how cold it is down here, uh, the technical staff uses a couple of tablets. They cut and review plays mid-game. Well, both tablets, they just shut down. And on a personal note, I keep my notes in my tablet, and it just went haywire. The battery was 85%, and all of a sudden went to 10% in less than a minute, and now it doesn't work. So, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty chilly, John. Two entire degrees Fahrenheit is Greg Burhalter. I guess feeling comfortable about the result. He's going to go uh, take a photo during the stoppage in play. Christian Roldan, who has not played any of the last five games, will be coming on here for the last few minutes tonight.
Not just yet, though. Man, Hevar's not actually been taking any of the goal kicks or free kicks throughout this second half as Lozano brings that down. Acosta couldn't take him off at Anthony Robinson, a late step. He's got to get back now as it goes wide. Rochez into the middle. Only Americans there. I mean, look, we, we've talked a lot about the United States tonight. It has been a good performance, but boy, this is one of the worst Honduran teams I've seen in a while. And it's a team that's continually in the last round of World Cup qualifying, going to Olympics have some good young talent. You see a lot of their talent come to Major League Soccer, then go overseas, but I mean, they've offered next to nothing. I, get, I don't want to take away credit from the U.S. It's been a good U.S. performance, but this is a Honduran team that's dead last in qualifying. They've struggled to score goals. They've struggled to keep them out. They have the worst goal differential. So they're going to have a lot of questions and a lot of inquests after this process is fully over. Weston McKinney's night is done. He's going to make way for Christian rolled on and if Christian Pulisic's going to be on the bench, if Tyler Adams going to be out hurt, you needed a big night from Weston McKinney. I think it's safe to say we got it. Yeah, he was. He, he stepped up. He got this going early. A lot of talk about that early goal for Canada in that match where the U.S. lost. And they get the early goal here. It comes off a set piece. I've talked time and time about his timing, arriving in the right place, right time. It's not by chance. You feel it. And you know where to find the ball. Know where those little soft spots are, those gaps. And, not just his goal. He was phenomenal tonight, really. Just driving the attack forward, defensively pressing, winning the ball back, and a real captain-like performance for this team when they were missing some key figures in the starting lineup, guys like Tyler Adams. So, big nod to Weston McKinney tonight. And they're not messing around. He's going straight to the sauna. He's, he's done. He's <laughs> in the locker room. U.S. four substitutions they've made, but they've used their three windows. So the U.S. are out of changes tonight as Christian rolled on. Gets on for his 31st career appearance. And to finish the thought on Honduras, it is bizarre that they've had this regression at the senior level. They've qualified for four straight Olympics. Remember the last two, they beat the U.S. Yeah. in the key qualifying game. They've qualified for the last three under-20 World Cups. So there's clearly a big disconnect here between success at sort of youth level tournaments and the fact that they were eliminated with four games still to go, and they're talking about now 22 goals allowed in this 11 games now. That's the worst of any team in the final round of CONCACAF qualifying. Five minutes to go here. Scoreless after a quarter hour in El Salvador, between El Salvador and Canada. Mexico and Panama will kick off at the top of the hour. Polistic driving inside, able to keep it. Polistic rolled in. Chance for Roldan, who's never scored in any of his 30 prior appearances for the U.S. That one's up and out. And he knows he had a great look. Defender in this case, Minor Figueroa is taking the goal kick instead of Menhibar, the goalkeeper. Roldan brings it down. This is brother Alex, plays for El Salvador right now against Canada. The back heel, and Elise was back to get it in front of Cannon. Now he whistled for a foul. Yeah, the two big things coming in for the U.S. tonight beyond the big picture just must win to keep qualifying on track. Just two goals in the first half of the first ten qualifiers. They got two tonight. No goals from set pieces in the first ten games of qualifying. All three tonight have been from dead ball situations. The McKinney header direct from Kellen Acosta service and then two more on knockdowns off set pieces. Instead of Torrey. Able to reverse and escape the pressure. Got a tour now. It's going to be a close offside decision. Aronson with Ferreira in the middle. Aronson's cross, knocked down. Polistic behind him. Rolled on. Save off the line. Oh, my Second God. Polistic is there. It's four. Now the flag does come up. 
So VAR would have to show that it was onside in that sequence, but if it does, the goal will count. Yeah, I, I think Aronson might have just been offside here on this pass that he receives from Della Torre. He was trying to curve his run. It'll be close, but my first thought that was he was offside. What a sequence at the end of that play, though. We're going to get a look at it here. It's Aronson. Yeah, I mean, he looks offside. Obviously not a perfect angle because we can't see right down the line. But yeah, I mean, he's it's a dangerous ball. In the line. What about the two clearances off the line? Well, Don denied not once and then Ferreira denied. <laughs> and then Maldonado is getting out of the way of Pulisic's hit. So not quite the six they hung on Honduras. Last time around in a home World Cup qualifiers, a, a 4 1 win in September in this round of qualifying, which matched Honduras' worst ever home loss in a World Cup qualifier. And here we're back to June when the U.S. left it until the dying minutes to get a Jordan Pifont goal and a 1 0 win against Honduras in the CONCACAF Nations League semifinal. Miles Robinson wins the header roll. Dawn, clever touch. Della Torre on the run. Options on her side. Della Torre. Pulisic! Got poked away from him and then cleared him behind. It was Wisdom Kaye there, last ditch defending, and it's out for a U.S. corner. I, I think that window to play the pass to Pulisic was it was gone. There was, there was an opportunity Della Torre has to play the ball. You're going to see he has Pulisic to his left before and then hesitates a little bit, allowing the defender to get back and make the challenge to poke it away. Good, positive, incisive play, forcing defenders to commit once again from Luca Della Torre. 90th minute. Costa once again on the corner, but Hilar stays at home. Again, it's knocked down. A whistle goes. And a foul. And our referee, O'Shea Nation, has seen enough because he's told the fourth official there will be no stoppage time. So that might well be the last action. But a U.S. team, it was a calculated risk to play a game in February in Minnesota. It was a calculated risk to leave Christian Pulisic on the bench in a game that anything short of a win was going to make the World Cup qualifying campaign get very rickety. But Weston McKinney in the eighth minute, Zimmerman later on, Pulisic off the bench. They've done what they needed to do. There's the final whistle. Three games to go in qualifying, and the United States still very much on track to go to Qatar. This was a must-win game for the U.S., and they got exactly what they would have wanted. They got the early goal in the first half. They got the second one off a set piece. It ended up being three for them. And this was a truly dominant performance, and one that you should have expected, and that this team delivered under pressure. Coming after that Canada result, where a lot of questions about Greg Berhalter and the tactics and all of this. And he made some big calls tonight, Greg Berhalter. And he got the perfect recipe because he got the 3-0 victory, three points at home, and very much alive, as you said, John, and on track to go to Qatar. So job done for the U.S. Roll on. Who you got next? Mexico in Azteca, and then Panama and Costa Rica. Three games to go, U.S. in a great spot. Rob Mo and Alexi back down to you as it finishes here in St. Paul, Minnesota, in a World Cup qualifying match. The United States three, Honduras nil. All right, guys, so the United States just kind of strengthens their grasp on that number two spot in qualifying. Remember, top three automatically move three. The fourth goes to a playoff. USA sitting on 21 points right now, plus nine goal differential. Christian Pulisic, the big conversation pregame, not getting the start. It was one of many bold calls by Greg Berhalter, Alexi, leading into this game. Pregame, you said this was his most important game as a U.S. manager, how did he come out of it grade-wise? Oh, hey, everything that he did 
ultimately was correct in terms of the personnel and the way that, that this team played. Big, you know, with some big, big choices, especially that Pulisic thing. But keep in mind that after that Canadian team, Greg Berhalter took a lot of criticism for his comments talking about dominating. Well, they dominated here today and they got the goals. You saw goals in the first half. You saw set piece goals. This was a commanding performance by this team. And if you're going to criticize Greg Berhalter when things don't go right, you also have to give him credit when he does make those big decisions as he did today. He got it right. He lived up to a lot of the hype when it comes to Greg Berhalter. And we talked before about how important this game was. This U.S. should feel it. They should smell it. They should taste it. It's within reach, that World Cup bit. Greg Berhalter getting his 33rd win in charge of the U.S. men's national team since taking over in December of 2018. This is a huge one. The U.S. with four more points would absolutely lock up a World Cup spot. Three more points should do the job. We go down on the field. Let's hear from Christian Pulisic. Christian, just give us your thoughts on the team's overall performance. Yeah, it was a great performance from the team today. Obviously, um, we struggled a bit with set pieces, and that was really big for us today, especially with the conditions. So, uh, yeah, it was a really important three points. How was it for you coming from the bench and getting a brace? A brace? I didn't. The second one didn't count, did it? No, well, that, that last one didn't count. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's my job to come in and make a difference, and uh, I'm glad I could I could get the goal. So. And finally, Christian, how was it playing in the cold? Uh, it's freezing out here. I'm looking forward to getting into the locker room, to be honest. I'll leave you on your way. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Well, he certainly sounds like a guy who's ready for a hot shower right about now. <laughs> Pulisic came on in the 65th minute. Two minutes later, he scores his 18th international goal. Nine of them have come in World Cup qualifiers. That made it 3-0. There's going to be a lot of talk about Pulisic and why he didn't start. He's the best player on this team. I think the neutrals out there would be questioning it. But, Mo, he came in in a bad run of form. You know, he was not the old Christian Pulisic. But you know who was the old guy that we're used to seeing? Young Weston McKinney. He was by far the man of the match for the U.S. tonight. Weston's in that, he's in that mode right now. He's got the juice right now. Like He was having fun. He had that smile. He had that swagger. Yes, and everything he touched was gold tonight. He was immense. There's not a blade of gra grass out there that that man did not cover tonight. Look, we talked before in pregame. There were some players not performing. There were some players who were going to miss out on this game, but Weston was one has been the heartbeat of this team. I give him a tremendous amount of credit. We heard Stu talking about it during the game. How he responded to the negative moments that happened in his career early on in qualifying, how he bounced back, how he put his head down and just focused on executing on the, on the pitch for club and country. Incredible performance. I look forward to seeing him continue to play like that throughout the rest of qualifying. So the U.S. getting the three points, getting the 3-0 win, the architect of that victory, the manager, Greg Berhalter, standing by live with Rodolfo. Greg, your thoughts on the, the win tonight? It was important to get a little, uh, to calm things down. I, I mean, for us, we want to stay in first or second in this window, so it's important to get the win. Um, but, I, you know, I, I first have to just say about these fans, man. Unbelievable. It was hard to stand out here. I can imagine them sitting, but the, the support in Minnesota is, is something I've never seen. Re really happy, really happy for the team. And we're in a good position now going to the last round. Talk about the team performance. Is this the best you've seen your team at qualifiers? Uh, we, we, we always try to do that, right? We try to say what, what games are the best and rank them and stuff. It's a process, and we want to put in good performances all the time. I can barely talk this in my left hand. But I think it was a good performance, but that's it. And about Christian, yeah. the, the plan went accordingly to what you, you, you yeah. thought. How was it coming him from the bench and making an impact? When you can bring a player like that in and he has the quality, his finish, you see the quality in his finish. I mean, that's, that's the whole benefit of having a guy like that, that you can bring it off the bench. He's normally not a solution player. He's a guy that starts in the beginning. But now, in this time, he can help the team in that way, and that's what, that's what he did tonight. Thank you very much, Thank Coach. You. Thank you. So Greg Berhalter made a bold call in signing off on playing this game in February in St. Paul, Minnesota. It pays off. There's this thing called home field advantage. You can't kick out World Cup qualifying. And if you got it, use it. Sellout crowd here in St. Paul. Berhalter gets the calls right, bringing Pulisic in off the bench. But Lex, 
don't get used to seeing Pulisic not starting games. No, look, he's, he's an incredible player. It was the right call in the right moment, and it gave these people what they want. They wanted to see a ruthlessness. They wanted to see this team come out, recognize the opportunity, not worry about the weather, and they delivered. And these people, as Greg Berhalter said, they brought it tonight. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, it was difficult. But I think all the players recognized that this was an opportunity to use this to their advantage, and they did. And it's not just the set pieces. It's how those set pieces came about. And the wing play, the corner kicks that came, all of that was chance creation. And that was so important because we have not seen that and didn't see that against Canada. And they get their second shutout in the last three games, the three games of this cycle. Plenty more to come on the post-game show. Uh, it might have been chilly outside, but Weston McKitty warmed up a lot of American hearts. 3-0 the final, the post-game show coming up next here on FS1. U.S. getting the 3-0 winner, the third goal courtesy of number 10, Christian Pulisic, his 18th international goal, 3-0 the final and three valuable points for the U.S. men's national team. We welcome you back live on FS1. We are here in St. Paul. Allianz Field, Rob Stone, Moe Adu, Sue Holden joins the conversation. Come on, Red people! Alexi Come Long. on! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Whoa! 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 Hey, if you're going to suffer through all this cold, why not have some fun, right? Oh, man, this is they awesome. They got a show These tonight. People they are got incredible. a show. Yeah. <laughs> Our, our thanks to the fans, sellout crowd here. Phenomenal. And, and you know you're in hardy country because it's, according to the Fox Weather app, it's zero degrees right now. These folks aren't going anywhere, right? Our thanks to all the crew members who've been out here for the last couple of days to bring this presentation to you. Couldn't happen without everything that you guys have done. The big story, though, of course, the USA getting three valuable points. They now sit on 21. They're within three, maybe four points from locking up yet another World Cup berth. Temperature, they said it was five. Listen, the feels like temperature kickoff was in the negatives. This the coldest game in U.S. men's national team history, but it was a hot start finally for the U.S. Yeah. Eighth minute. All sorts of set piece action for the U.S. today. It was, it, it was pretty incredible. The opportunities that they got, the fouls that they got, the corner kicks they got. Weston McKinney, for me, again, best player for the U.S., best player in this window, gets his head on it, 1-0. And Stu, they went hunting for another way in the 20th. Oh, I mean, what a save that is from Lopez. That, that, I had a great look at that right behind it. It was bending. It was coming back. That was going in the corner. He's fully across his goal, tips it past way. I can't believe it. He didn't get a goal tonight, but he was really active, Mo. And this man here, Kel Nakata, his range of passing is just, it's amazing to watch. But that run, that run in behind by Tim Moya, that opens up that pass for him. Doesn't get the, the I think that off. second touch, if he takes it across Lopez, he scores there, right? But I like the third in behind. Maybe yeah. the only thing the U.S. didn't get, Lex, was a goal from Ricardo Pepe, but he, he came close here. He did. I mean, this is a difficult one, by the way. 100%. So, it's a little bit much to ask of him to put it in, but he, you know, he was active. He's just trying to get back into it. And then, you know, you're looking at a player who's desperate to score goals, and it's just not, it's not happening right now. But again, more set pieces. Oh. You know what? The best thing, uh, you know, the only thing better than a, a one set piece, two set, piece. two set piece goals, and Walker Zimmerman, center, center back, back, coming up and saying, yeah, Why huge. Happy about that. Zimmerman, just <laughs> physicality there, right? Just bodying Maldonado, turning him. The what captain. a player he has been for this team yeah, since getting his third in international goal. How about the two-man game here between Wea and Weston McKinney, the 50th? I was just waiting for the dink. I was just waiting for the little chip the there. Chip. Yeah. But good combination play, good awareness, good movement, play and move. These two were having fun in that second half. Hey, uh, Christian Pulisic coming on the field, huh? Not a bad minute. sub. Not a bad sub. And he got involved pretty quickly. What's better than two set pieces, Alexi? Oh, three set, three pieces. set pieces. There we go. Look what I found. Christian Pulisic making an impact right off the bat. This is such a classy finish, though. I mean, he's he's flat-footed. The ball just comes to him. It's purely reactionary technique in the corner. Serginho Dest <laughs> blowing smoke. Having a little tea on the bench. He was having a good afternoon. Earlier in the night, Costa Rica getting a 1-0 win over the Reggae Boys. Jamaica eliminated from their hopes of qualifying for another World Cup. El Salvador, Canada underway right now, scoreless at the break. We'll take a look at our live updated standings from this region of CONCACAF and the United States getting the three-point win 
they bump up to 21 points. Their goal difference now at plus nine. Canada sitting on that tie. We give them a point. They're at 23 right now. Their goal difference plus 12. Next three games to the United States at Mexico. Home to Panama in Orlando, live here on FS1, and then at Costa Rica. That Panama game looking more and more like a real strong potential that the U.S. locks up their berth into their 11th World Cup. But they wouldn't be there without a strong start today, which is exactly what this program needed, Mo. Isn't it refreshing? Isn't it refreshing <laughs> to get an early goal and then be able to dictate the template? Like you talked about them dominating this game. Well, they dominate the game because they get that go-ahead goal early on, and then they're able to go out there and dictate things. And this man, Weston McKinney, was central to everything positive in this first half. It's a good ball, good delivery. So you talked about it in the, in the game. Good delivery quality, but the timing, the precision, the accuracy of this man right here, a man in form, it's just been, it's just been pretty to watch. And then Walker gets a second one. It's a center back, I mean, coming up. And the thing that I talked about, I think, throughout the course of this game was the delivery was good, Mo, but yes. also you had guys that were committing, getting their heads on things, keeping second balls alive. And one of the biggest questions I had coming in about this team, and actually even going back to the beginning, of this qualifying cycle was, look, this is a young team. These are young players that haven't experienced this before. And what would responses be like if things weren't going well for them? A lot of talk after that Canada match. Yeah. A lot of young guys that were put under a lot of pressure. A coach that was put under a lot of pressure. What response were we going to see tonight? And I think you got your answer. I was very impressed in the way in which they handled the pressure, the response from that, and getting a very important win, which at the end of the day. And look, these people support. here, the people that are watching at home, the American soccer community, we're incredibly passionate. We're incredi incredibly emotional. We go up and we go down. The sky's falling. Happy days are here again. And that's okay. That's, that's what sports is about. We're probably scarred from the failure of not making the last World Cup but this you know this team right now it is a work in progress it's not perfect it's gonna have moments where it goes down and Greg Berhalter absolutely it's fair to criticize him and to criticize these uh, these people but today in terms of the environment that was created and ultimately how that resulted in a positive result and a huge huge three points Greg Berhalter the it's the credit and these players that came out get the credit let's give some credit to Kellen Acosta <laughs> <laughs> the nonverbal told me the story, right? Kel Ooh. If it wasn't Weston McKinney as man of the match, Kellen Acosta would be getting some votes. Ooh. He was good, huh? I mean, this is all, those are hard shoes to fill in a guy like in a guy like Tyler Adams. But for Greg Burhalter to have a man like Kellen Acosta to come in and just play that role so comfortably, his distribution, his quality on set pieces, his ability to to put out fires when need be, but but be that temple setter in a World Cup qualifier was so important. But I mean, hit delivery throughout the course of 90 minutes was the reason why they scored these set pieces. We talk about them and us wanting them to score in the run of play. That's great, and I think that will come. But when you can have that as an option to get quality delivery, get good runs in the box, you have a chance to win games. Yeah, and, and Kelly, it's an interesting conversation, right? Because it, it has been, and I think most U.S. fans, including myself, want to see Musa, McKinney, and Adams. That should be the starting midfield three. But that when you have opportunities like for Kellen Acosta in games like tonight and you turn up in a big way, it makes you start to think about different options that you have, which is the perfect thing for Greg Berhalter to say, hey, maybe I could play Adams as one of the eights and I could have Acosta as a six. Maybe I could have two defensive midfielders and play them in there together. The most important thing for me with Kellen Acosta, outside of all the stuff that he does technically, he's a gamer. You know, he turns up in big, big moments for this team, and he's a guy that I would want on the field when I know it's tough and you need somebody to dig in and get stuck in, and he does all the types of things that a coach would want to see in a player. Look, and a big story from tonight, obviously, is going to continue to be Christian Pulisic. Whether he's on the field or off the field, he is going to be a story. That's how big he is, and that's how much we expect from Christian Pulisic, and he has not been good for a while now. He was good in this substitute capacity today. Greg Berhalter made that decision, a big decision. He comes in, obviously rewards him uh, with the goal here. He can't be happy. He, wa he wants to start. That's, that's fine. But the reality is we are at a time right now in an era, if we're going to talk about all this talent that we have, all of the depth that we have, then guess what? There are going to be others that are going to be able to step up and be big time. And Christian Pulisic may at some point be the most important and best player on this team. But right now, it's Weston McKinney. So I'm curious. We just saw that goal reaction. You know, the subdued, put the hands down. What did you make of that one, Stu? I'm not quite sure. I, I, you know, I, I think it was one of 
calm down. This is okay. It'd be interesting when he's asked about this after the fact. And you're right, Alexi. I, I think what I want to see now from Christian Pulisic is what is his reaction and, and what type of response do you get, not just tonight, but now going back to Chelsea and then coming back in the next window. Because make no mistake about it, he started from the bench tonight. For the U.S. to be the best version of themselves, he's in that starting lineup. That's not a question. But he had to know that there was the strong option for him to be placed on the bench the way he's been playing. Yeah, yeah but I think that's why his reaction, I mean, obviously the goal is, it's, it's a, he takes the goal well, right? He's in the right place at the right time, but I think that's, that goes a long way. Look, he came off the bench against Mexico, albeit, albeit that was because of injuries, working his way back from injury, but look, I think when you're in this kind of form and you're in this kind of position, you take what's given and what's in front of you. And right now, he came off the bench, he worked hard, put himself in a situation to score a second goal, it was called back for offside, but I thought he came out and gave a good effort for himself. Pretty sure we're going to see him as long as he's healthy in the start. He has to be. He has the to next be. Set yeah, of World Cup qualifiers, which come your way in March. Just three more games left for the U.S. Men's National Team to wrap up qualification for the World Cup. Those are the three games. That game on the 27th in Orlando, Florida, live here on FS1. Other key dates to keep in mind: the World Cup draw coming your way. I hope we're, I hope we're in that, man. Rob. <laughs> no joke, baby. No joke. April 1st. Some big international windows where you know the U.S. is going to have to be active, going to have to organize some games, and they're going to organize those games when they find out, ideally, if they qualify, who is going to be in their group. Players released November 14th, which is just one week ahead of the opening game. One week ahead of the opening game of the World Cup, which starts November 21st. Mention the other six teams in the octagonal in action today. We'll have high right highlights from around CONCACAF. The U.S. though getting the big 3-0 win. Let's see how Canada's reacting today. Doha getting ready to lay out the red carpet for this fall slash winners World Cup starting in November. We are just 292 days away from launching our coverage of the FIFA World Cup from Qatar on Fox Sports. Walker Zimmerman wearing the captain's armband for the U.S. tonight. Muscles went in there in the 37th minute. His third international goal that made it 2-0. They win at 3-0. And here he is post game with Rodolfo. Staying by with tonight's captain Walker Zimmerman. Walker, uh, just how good was it for you guys to get that early goal? It was really important. You know, we talked about coming out there with a lot of intensity, setting the tone, and moving the ball quickly. And I thought we did a really good job breaking them down, finding Kellen early, uh, switching point of attack, and then, you know, guys were getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker tonight. Um, and we certainly made the most of a lot of opportunities. And how memorable, besides the cold, was it for you wearing the captain arm man, getting the second goal? Yeah, I'm going to remember this one for sure. Uh, this was special. The, the fans were incredible. I mean, when we stopped moving for about 30 seconds, you know, I was trying to move around and stay warm. So hats off to the, the fans who, who stuck it out there just standing or sitting in their seats. Uh, they were incredible tonight, and we really appreciate all, all of their support. Congrats on the win. Thank you, Walker. Thank you. And hats off to the fans who are still with us here <laughs> around our Fox Sports set in beautiful St. Paul, Minnesota, home of the Can we buy them Loons. a drink after this, by the way? Or There's something? a couple waiting over there for us, assuming they haven't frozen up yet. Rob Mostu and Alexi back here with you. Sold out crowd tonight to see the U.S. win in Jamaica. It was Costa Rica starting the day, Mo, in fifth place. They had to get some points. Jamaica needed to avoid elimination. And the reggae boys with an opportunity there late in the first half. And it's Mikel Antonio, probably their best player, and big recovery there by Kendall Watson. Keller Novice was always right. You know, this Jamaican side, I, I, they kind of disappointed this, yeah, this uh -oh. campaign. Uh oh, uh oh. I think the biggest problem for them, Mo, is just the way that they started. They got behind the eight ball from the beginning. They had struggle with selection issues and not being able to get all their best players there. And from that, I mean, look, come up with a big save there on a penalty kick, and you're thinking, okay, we've got a chance here, 0 0. Andre Blake, Philadelphia well, he Union. Does, right? Philly Union. He does. No big deal, Philly Union. It's not a broadcast unless Mo mentions the Union. <laughs> but couldn't do anything about this one. And oh boy, that is close. Real close. But look at the first touch. Does well the second, gets it out of his feet, and then just picks out that far corner. Joel Campbell. The old heads for Costa Rica keeping him alive, huh? Yeah, they go right. to 16 points. El Salvador, there was rumors that this game would not be played. El Salvador sorted things out, hosting Canada, who's on top of the group right now, and a big opportunity there for the Maple Leafs. A terrific save. Canada on the road in this one, and 
Long distance, Eustachio slips actually when he takes that. Look at this strike. Look at it, still a decent chance though, huh? Is that two touches? It might have been, I don't know, I can't call it, but. 0-0 zero, zero at the break. Mexico, Panama playing a little bit later. A lot of American eyes oh. will be on that one. That's pretty. That's pretty right there, that 3 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of jumps out at you. Yep, it? Yes, it does. That's an eye catcher. 3 nothing in front of a sold-out crowd here in St. Paul. To the U.S., they remain in second place. They're sitting on 21 points. Goal difference plus 9 right now. Again, Mexico and Panama in third and fourth. They are meeting later tonight. John oh. Candy. In oh, the no. Oh, no. I was thinking more, you know, Dumb and Dumber vibes. And I'm going to find a, a lamp post for you after this. Ooh, this is good. <laughs> Leo. Leo and Lex. Wow. Wow. I, I, I do. I give, you, I give you credit, though, man. Sitting out here the whole time. Hey, hey if you lick that microphone, will your tongue stick to it at this point? <laughs> Hey people, how we doing? All right. Yeah, they're not. They're not even going home, are they? It's beautiful. Don't be jealous of the hats. I am. I Just because he won the hat game. Don't be a <laughs> hater over there, man. Oh, what a day from Kenny and Zimmerman in the red, white, and blue. Plenty more to come from St. Paul on the backside. MLS is back. I'm so happy. In the clear on his right side. A moment. Fox Sports, your home for MLS Cup this year. And yes, the lead kicks off in just a few weeks. On Big Boy Fox, Bart Simpson Fox, it's the Timbers and the Revs Saturday, February 26th. The next day, Atlanta and Sporting KC here on FS1. That one at 3 Eastern. Final thoughts from St. Paul on the backside. The U.S. getting the 3-0 win. And they are sitting pretty to get themselves back to the FIFA World Cup. Weston McKinney with the header in the eighth minute, the earliest U.S. goal in this round of World Cup qualifying. Turned out to be the game winner. The U.S. wins it 3-0 here in St. Paul. Rob Moe, Stu Alexi, some of our best friends still here with us in Minnesota. Going to go around the table with the big winners, the big takeaways here. But first, St. Paul, Minnesota, this venue, they deserve more important games for the U.S. Just, men and women's Just not in teams. February, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just not in February. Summer games. Yeah, details, Mo. Um, they needed a response. And not just the players, but Greg. He made some, ball, some, some gutsy decisions, and they paid off. Six points from this window. They're in a good position still to qualify, and so this they set themselves up well. So I was impressed with that. And again, the standout for me was Weston McKinney. Yeah, I, I think my biggest takeaway is that qualifying isn't easy for a World Cup, and we found that out last cycle. There's highs, there's lows. Sometimes it's difficult to to maintain a perspective and keep an even keel and, and focus on what has been good. This team has a lot of work to do, but I think U.S. fans should be proud of the performance they saw tonight. Still work to do going forward as far as picking up more points, but this team is well on track to qualify. It was it was beautiful. It was ruthless. It was American. We'll take the three points, and I don't have to hear people whining and complaining and clutching pearls about playing this game in this weather. Moving on. Home field advantage, but they have not qualified yet. Don't start the celebrations, yep. but you can warm up the bus for sure. We mentioned three games left in World Cup qualifying. That home date we just showed you on FS1 in Orlando versus Panama is paramount. They very well could lock up a berth in Qatar in that game. McKinney in the eighth minute. The captain, Walker Zimmerman, banging that one in in the 37th minute. And then Captain America, Christian Pulisic, for good measure, two minutes after coming on, scoring another goal. The U.S. takes it 3-0, and they take a massive step forward to heading to Qatar.